This is Scott Tipton, author of Star Trek The Mirror Wars, available in comic shops everywhere right now. And welcome to the Never Gets Old podcast, starring Matt Jackson. I am Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod. My name is Ichabod Crane. My name's MacGyver. Colonel Jack O'Neill, SG-1. I am Batman! Hello. I'm the doctor. So there's this man, he has a time machine. Up and down history he goes, zip, 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 getting into scrapes. For years, and maybe more than that, right, Mac? But, but how long has it been? Has it been six, seven years ago? Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Hey, now, wait a minute. Now, wait just a minute. Human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day. I've got something for you. Oh, uh, merci, Sonora. Just one more thing, sir. Oh, boy. Just like that. Bing, bang, boom. At this point, I'd settle for the boom. They'd love it here, don't you think? This is what I'm saying. <clears throat> and by the way, where is your podcast? Tell everybody that's here. Welcome to the Never Gets Old podcast podcast of all we love in TV, movies, music, and comics, with your hosts, Mac Jackson and Nathan Shell. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, and YouTube. Donations at paypal.com at macwjackson at comcast.net. Listen to my taping songs, DJ saying they're too long, his guitar. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Never Gets Old podcast. I'm your host, Mac Jackson, and I have my buddy Scott Tipton back. Um, We're using this as an episode to promote the Mirror Wars, Um, but really it's just a chance for us to shoot the bull like we do. (laughs) (laughs) So now that that's out of the way, how you been? Doing good. Doing good. Hanging in there. Yeah. uh, I thought, I don't know if it was last time we spoke, this whole virus thing was going to be over and done with and we were going to be able to like you know i started to go out like a fool and enjoy the world yes so did i right (laughs) (laughs) and then all of a sudden like now we're i'll tell you what this isn't just a a minor inconvenience members of my family like my nephew and his whole family and now my brother-in-law got it yeah no yeah more and more people uh, are, are kind of coming within the circle of people who are dead. I mean, the good thing is most folks who are vaccinated, they just get a really bad flu and then they're okay. Exactly. And they're, the, they're the, those. The, the holdouts are the ones I worry about because they're the ones that anytime you see these numbers going up, it's all unvaccinated. It's horrifying. Mm-hmm. My, uh, my daughter is too young to get the shot. Everybody yeah. in my family, we're not, we're not idiots. We get the shot as soon as possible. Yeah. And, you know, but my daughter can't yet. She's nine. And they're saying October, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'll believe it when I see it. But even though they got the shot, my nephew is down. Like, his, he works for his father. Um, mm-hmm. It's an electric company. And his father sent him a, a text to say, give me a call. And he couldn't. He, he got, like, that bad, you know, down for the count, just let me sleep kind of flu. Yeah, yeah. But he's doing better. And then, of course, then his father somehow got it. I'll tell you, if it didn't bother the children, I'd be like, you know what? If you're stupid enough to not get the shot, right? have at it. You want to, you, you know. know. Because that's what happened here was that we, uh, California had, to, had been doing really well. And I mean, just before the Delta variant, everything was opening up again. I was like, all right. I went I went to California Adventure and saw the new Avengers Park, which, by the way, was awesome. I saw um, the pictures. And so, yeah, and I was feeling good. But then once Delta hit and I started seeing the numbers rise again, I was like, all right. I'm going back to Fort of Solitude. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'll see y'all Christmas. Yep. And now, Cal- now California and LA is coming out of it again. So I'm, I'm getting to like, you know, test my, 
my feet in the water. I was thinking about going to, to the Magic Castle mm -hmm. this weekend because the, the castle has reopened, I think, for vaccination, vaccination cards only and for a mask. But still, I love the castle. Yeah. But I was like, I, I listened to Penn Jillette's podcast. Okay. And he got it. And oh. He was really back, so he described it as like, he said it was like five days of the worst flu I ever had and then nine days of, of miserable quarantine being stuck in my house. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. thought, Ben's a pretty smart guy. He took every precaution. He got it. Do I need to be in a poorly ventilated, 100-year-old mansion full of magicians right now? Maybe in a couple of weeks. Let's, let's give it a little more time. You know? Right, right, right. Well, and that's the thing, too, because I have my <gasps> breathing issues where I'm not asthmatic, but I can't run for long. Like, I can run from here to the end of the wall, but then I'm right. going to taste copper for a while. <laughs> um, and I can't take that chance. So, you know, uh, my job, I had to, I don't know if you remember me telling you, I had to, well, the job I had, they made go away to overseas. So they trained me in this god-awful, I mean, granted, I'm thankful for a job, don't get me wrong, but it's the last job in the company that I ever wanted, but it's better than unemployment. Right. So I was there from, I don't know, June, I'll say June or July, and then... Yeah, you know, I was working in the office. I thought, look, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I don't mind that ride in the morning. And there's only a handful of us in the building. Like most people are working from home because they didn't get their job switched. But all right, I'll work here. Well, then they come to me uh, a couple weeks ago. They go, you're doing good. Want to work from home? I'm like, oh, son of a bee. <laughs> I, I, just, I just stopped that. And in this case, last time I was able to bring a laptop home, well, now it's off to the side. It's a whole computer. Yeah. No, I I, I have had a gigantic um, desktop computer on my dining room table for over a year and a half now. Because, yeah. Well, because my, my girl also works from home, so she has the back office mm -hmm. back there, so I had to set up right out here. So it's just cost of doing business, you know. I'm not going to complain because it's I would much rather be working from home than being in an office right now. And that's the thing. Once at first I was like, I don't know. I don't feel really comfortable with my job right now. I still have things to learn. And then the manager last week came over on last Thursday and said, so she had like, uh, here it is. She comes over with this box and goes, <laughs> you're ready to work from home. I'm like, well, I, and I thought about it. I thought, yeah, you know what, with the way things are going. And also they pipe in the same, it's, it's serious radio. But you're listening to basically, it, they cut between three hours or so of the 70s, then the 80s, and then whatever is current. And that's fine, but it's always the same 20 songs. Ugh. I love, I don't need to hear Rocket Man every day, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and so I'm like, just for this alone, I, I'll go home. I go, I'll go home. The loudest thing is the buzz of this computer from the hard drive spinning. Like I'm by a window. I'll I'll do that. I've I've, I've been very fortunate that all my work has been able to, to adapt, right to, to to being strictly strictly working at home. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go to the office. I don't have to commute. Mm -hmm. So you know I, I I love my office. Don't get me wrong. My office. I, I I long to be back in my office, but. <laughs> Right now, best off. So. Right? Because you're comfortable. You get you have your stuff around you. Yeah. You can take two minutes and go, and, you know, go back to work. And, yeah, and, I, and I'm just not worried about it. I mean, because, I, I mean, I love taking the train to my office because it's only like a, it's only a barely a, a 12-minute commute. Mm -hmm. But being on the train right now, ooh, I don't know. Maybe. No, that's a can of just yuck. Yeah. So, listen, it's all good. I can, I can adapt. I know. I know. So, um, I, I went to Disneyland a couple weeks ago. And I was like, all right, I hadn't been back since this whole thing started. I went to DCA for Avengers. I hadn't been back to the, to the OG Disneyland. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to play it safe. You know, I mean, I just, I missed the park. I wanted this, I, mean, I need to get out of the house, but we'll just stay outside. And any sort of, in, any sort of interior ride or attraction, we'll play it by ear. Mm -hmm. And it was fine. But most of the day, like, I, I got into Rise of the Resistance. And it's, you know, I'll take a chance at COVID for Rise of the Resistance. Because I hadn't <laughs> seen that yet. It's like a 20-minute ride. So, like, you oh. know what? I don't care. Uh, it, it, and, by the way, it's insane. It's, yeah. it, is, it is, hands down, the best theme park attraction ever made, ever. Mm. I, I, I'm stunned by it. 
That's the Marvel one? Is that what you're no, talking this about? Is the Star Wars one. Oh, the Star Wars one. Yeah, yeah. And it's total immersion. Literally, you go to the real base, and then you go into a Rebel shuttle for a trip to the new real base. On the way, uh... and no matter what, you're outside, and you see, like, BB-8 getting loaded up into an X-Wing over as you're running to your ship. And you get in your ship and take off, and there's a full-size animatronic act bar up there in the captain's chair. Uh... And then while you're up there, you get pulled in by a Star Destroyer. And, and it pulls you in. And then that same door you came in opens, and you're in the landing bay of a Star Destroyer with, like, an enormous full-size window, maybe, like, 50 Stormtroopers. All I saw that. I saw your yeah. picture. I'm like, oh. And then they're, they're, it's not like they just stacked up suits. They're all moving little bits here and there. So they're all, they all have the illusion of life going on. And then they just yell at you, get to your cell. And then they march you down the halls to your cell, and you get busted out, and then, and then the ride starts. It's oh, amazing. God. See, that get, that would be – that is so addicting to me. It's the same thing like going to conventions. When I get to meet people that I've been dying to meet, Yeah, I, I understand that could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But at the same time, I think, no, it's not. No, it's not because I, I bet you they're going to come around again, and when they are, I'm going to be there. Yeah. But, if, you know, that adrenaline of – I want more of that. Yeah, yeah. And and I remember that. I think we talked about this. The Back to the Future ride that they used yeah. to have. That yeah. was the best ride I've ever. Besides, really, that was so well done. Right. Besides loving Back to the Future. It was so. Like you felt like you were in. Uh, that, that You get the tingles. You're like mm -hmm. I feel like I'm part of this universe. Holy and, crap. Yeah. And with that one. I mean, they created that whole business of. Uh, Doc Brown creating the Time Institute. And then, of course, Biff's running around there, mucking things up. And all the stuff they shot while you're waiting in the line to kind of build that world worked so well. So well. It yeah. killed me when they got rid of that. I know. It became like, a, I don't know, a Harry Potter it's, it's, ride. It's, it's Simpsons now. What is it? Simpsons. Okay, last time I was it's, there. It, it, it's pretty good. I mean, as far as, as a big motion attraction ride, it, it works pretty well. But it's just it, the, the cool thing. And again, I think that a big part of it is nostalgia because to me, nothing's just going to be as cool as Back to the Future. Right. And yeah, if, and for if, uh, if, for kids today, Simpsons had probably has more value than Back to the Future does. I don't know. Maybe. I guess. But I, I don't actually, know. Also, I will say, as part of the whole Springfield they built at Universal Studios, it's really cool. Really? Because there's a Moe's Tavern, and there's a Krusty Burger, <laughs> and you, you can get a Flaming Mo. It's, oh. all really, it's really well done. You know, I'm dying to have uh, the, the Butterbeer. See, I'm not a I'm not a butterbeer fan. I don't know what it is. It, you know, I, I, it's it's it basically it's it's a super butterscotch flavored soda. Oh, okay. Yeah, and people, I mean, it's just me. People who love it love it. I want to try it. I, I it's one of those that's on my list. I just yeah. got actually. I couldn't wait to show you this. The, she only bought one yesterday because she didn't know if this was going to be any good. Vanilla Coca Cola with coffee. I haven't even seen that. I know, which is yeah. why, see, in my family, we have one of, we're like, wait a minute, if something's weird and we've never had it before, like, the, you know how they come out with all the new flavored Oreos? Yeah. Do that, do that with the potato chips, do that with the soda. Well, as soon as she saw this, she's like, usually I'd buy a case, but I wanted to see it. So I said, look, it, I'm going in to talk to Scott. <laughs> I need a drink. You had me waiting on this since yeah. yesterday, and I couldn't have it in the morning. I need to have it. So they all came down. We all took a sip. Hmm. I love it. I think it's great. I mean, first of all, it's vanilla Coke, which I love anyway. But then you got that, the coffee bean. You know what? You know that taste of like yeah. uh, that coffee bean? It's in there subtly. But, you know, one of the best things about living in Los Angeles is that when it comes to weird foods, the three main theme parks have all decided that food is a big thing now that they we used to get from eating. So anytime there's either a holiday or an event or a special event, they go nuts with the food. And like Disneyland food is amazing compared yeah. to, like, to Florida. Disneyland yeah. food is a way above that. Mm -hmm. Universal has really upped their game lately. And Knott's Berry Farm has the best food of any theme park, the three. I didn't Knott's, even know that was a thing. Yeah, Knott's, well, Knott's Berry Farm is a theme park designed around food. Because in the 30s, it was just a pie stand where they sold chicken. Right. And then he built the theme park to amuse the people waiting in line for the chicken. Oh, so the neat. food has to be good there. And then, <laughs> so they just started the annual Halloween stuff at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the king of, like, Halloween type events. They're great. 
yeah. but they also do all kinds of crazy food. And one of the things they have this year is the uh, the uh, the pizza burger. It's a burger. Okay. The bottom bun is a cheese pizza, and then there's your burger, and the top bun is a pepperoni pizza. It wow! Lo- it looks like an abomination. I sure. expect it to be a nightmare. I watched three reviews on YouTube. They're like, "This is surprisingly good. Five stars for the pizza burger." Like, <laughs> oh, God damn it! Now I gotta go get a pizza burger. <laughs> yeah, wow. I know. Oh, well, we don't have a, a um. Oh, who's the chicken people here? Um, the the. Which was it, the, uh, Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. They're finally building a Chick-fil-A five minutes from here. Uh, they've, been, they've been building it for like before COVID. And I guess COVID kind of made everybody go, man, we'll just wait on it. But they've been showing commercials here for the last 10 to 15 years to get you hyped for it. So I'm like, everybody talks about how great Chick-fil-A is. Come on. And I know that when it does open, whenever. Yeah. I still have to wait because there's going to be car. People already warned me. Said no, there's cars wrapped around the block. Yeah, just it to is, get it. Is it, is it, good? Awfully, it is awfully good. Oh. <laughs> I had I had no idea intolerance was so delicious. Right. <laughs> I do feel bad, but every now and then, yeah, give me some chicken strips. That, that's the thing. <laughs> C- Cindy's like, I'm kind of torn because on one hand, they don't really support the minorities. With the gay rights and everything. But man, that's good chicken. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, so every now and then I'll be like, I'll get myself a chicken sandwich. And I'm like, I'll add 20 bucks to my check to the ACLU this month. It'll yeah, be- there you go. <laughs> and and I, scales. the fact that people talk about it so much. It's, it's really good. Like, I, they finally put a Popeye's um, near me. Also, went, also a strong bird. Really? You think? Popeye's is good. The, the because- Popeye's chicken sandwich is amazing. I went twice. I went once and I, you know, I walked in there last Christmas and I thought, okay, I'm by myself. It's my shopping day. I'm, you know, walking around with the mask on. Darn it. I'm going to treat, when I go out and I do my Christmas shopping, I treat myself to get some splurge thing. I'm going to try some Popeyes. It's been sitting there. Cajun. I remember the commercials. I walk in, the guy goes, all right, what can I get you? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, what, what do you recommend? Well, there's the chicken sandwich. Sure. Do you want it spicy or not? I went, I, okay, don't, don't quiz me. Just what should I get? He goes, I like the spicy. I said, yeah, but don't you think my first time through, I should get the normal, the basic? <laughs> he goes, sure. So I eat that. I sit out in the car in the cold, in the snow. And like, it's a lot of coating. You know what I mean? It, 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 is, there, it is a heavy batter, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think your mistake was not going for the spicy. Just the, the spicy Here, slaps you around. Here's part two. A <laughs> couple months later, I go, I wasn't crazy about that one, but you know what? People talk about the spicy. I'm going to go get the spicy. <laughs> I wish I knew this. I would have texted you as I was, or, or filmed it as I was eating it. I go, all right, here we go. Spicy. And again, sitting in the car by myself. I take it by, oh, whoa, ooh, yes. oh, wow, hey, oh, pickles, okay, but wow, yeah, I couldn't even taste around. the chicken, yeah, <laughs> you described it well, because it was such a punch in the face, yeah. I went, okay, so that's not subtle, there's like no middle ground, <laughs> no, there, is no, there is no subtlety to it, <laughs> oh, man, so now I'm hoping, I mean, the way people go on about Chick-fil-A, I'm, well, they, 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 it's funny, I, I didn't expect this, uh, conversation to be taking such a chicken turn as long as we're, as long as we're here sure there, there's an amazing place called raising canes is there, are there any of those that where you are nope not yet for years the only place i got it was there was one at the end of the strip at vegas mm-hmm. and all they do is chicken tenders or chicken sandwiches and then sort of texas toast waffle fries and lemonade that's all they have sure. i always i was a restaurant that has like six items because these guys are focused it's mm-hmm. gonna be good mm-hmm. and they're amazing and so every time i go to vegas on the, the the Sunday or Monday morning, the hungover drive home, stop at the end of the strip, going to Raising Cane's, and you get carb up, and then you know, that's a five hour drive back to back to LA. Sure. And the, 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 so the, the chains have been expanding, but they're killing me because they're expanding 
north and south, but nowhere in LA. And they keep uh, getting closer. I mean, there's right now there's one in Ventura, and then there was one in Anaheim, and now there's one in Torrance. And I'm like, biggest city in the world, get some raising kings in here. Right. So it's, it's coming, but it's moving slowly. Well, we had we had um uh Sonic. That was a big deal that we had for years. Well, a few years, because again, you'd see the commercials. And you go, boy, I want to try the way they talk about this. I want to try it. It seems we're in the exact same boat with Sonic because they advertise like mad, but there's none in LA proper. The well, closest is either either way deep in Orange County or like super north. It was the place to go for me and my boy. I pull up in the car, you know, you roll down the window, you make your order. He gets to jump in the front seat, feel like a big shot. We get our food, and you know, well, I don't know if I told you, I was. At my aunt's house, and she goes, "Yeah, how about that? No more Sonic." I went, what, "What are you talking about? We ju- we were just there." No, there's some sort of corporate. Somebody on a corporate level made some sort of decision of we're remodeling everything, which means we're starting from scratch and we're taking away a whole bunch of our things that have come around in the last five years or less. So all the Sonics that were in our area gone. Now they're another freaking Taco Bell. I think we got yours because it's Sonic's expanding like mad out here. Yeah, and I don't know why they made that decision, but yeah. we're like, what? Wh- why? It's not like it wasn't doing well; it was doing fine. But now, of course, they add, they add more stuff to the to the commercials and go. Now we have this. Now we have that. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're we're still on the lookout for our new guy place to go to, and we think it'll probably be Chick Fil A. But again, they have to build it before we can come. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is pretty good. Uh, well, downtown, we're by, um, we're basically Scranton. And this summer, while the kids would sleep over at their grandparents a couple nights a week, my wife and I said, you know what? With this whole COVID thing just about being over, foolish <laughs> us, um, let's have a date night. And I just thought, you know, we had some running around to do to buy shower curtains or something. I said, you know what? I haven't been downtown in a while. Let's walk around because again, trying to be healthy. Let's walk. Let's. It's a nice summer night. Let's just walk around downtown. Well, we stumble into a place that we heard about. Seemed like a hipster kind of a bar, you know, backyard ale house. It's called, and we thought we'll eat here. Whatever. The food is so good, and so okay. Now it's a journey every week where are we gonna go well there's this place this place and we're trying them all and i'll tell you something you know when we i think we talked about this before shows like um somebody feed phil yeah where you see these and you're like i wish i was there because the way they talk about this food it's like nothing you've ever had before downtown scranton has upped its food game to such a level level that we're like, I'm sad to see this go. Like I had a, a surf and turf taco at a place and I was like, I got three of them and they're big. But I was like, I don't want this to end. <laughs> and, and we ended up going back the next week. But I asked around, I said, what, why is everything all of a sudden good? And they said, because the competition is so fierce that if one person, like say there's four top restaurants slash bars downtown, they are in such fierce competition that if somebody takes a day off, like if somebody takes a Monday off, the other place stays open. And if somebody doesn't make something good, they're gone. Yeah. Like they'll go out of business. I'm like, great. And the prices aren't bad either because they could bump up the prices if they wanted to. Yeah, that's that's been... The, the saving grace of this whole uh, thing for us has been, you know, LA, LA has always been an amazing restaurant town. And then uh, just, just as a necessity, the rise of the, the DoorDashes and the Uber Eats means everything is now a delivery joint, which it didn't used to be, like fine dining places are. Uh-huh. And you know, I, I know in normal times, DoorDash is not the, we're the best kind of, right. uh, of, of business service to keep restaurants going mm-hmm. but now whenever people can't go out it was it was, it was absolute necessity so we were going like everywhere like but no one going nowhere because it was all coming to the house <laughs> and so we went on this like restaurant tour of los angeles for like the last 18 months it's been great 
Yeah. Like, well, the, 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 you need something to get you through, you know? And I'm telling you, you really, you really appreciate good food. Yeah. It's not just something like, okay, most restaurants we go to, yeah, you're going to get something you enjoy, but you know what you're getting. Whereas now this past summer, we're like some sort of new concoction that is just, oh, I've never had. And this is amazing. And it's funny because you're talking about DoorDash. When DoorDash and those ilk came around, I always thought, how lazy can you be? Get your butt out the door, go to a restaurant. And for a long time before the pandemic, it was like, really? I, I'm too much of a sloth to get off my couch. I'm going to have the food brought to me. Then the pandemic hit and you went, oh, you know what? That's actually a very good I, idea. I, like I, I don't want a ventilator. Please bring, bring me my steak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's great because you're right. Like there's a Thai place that's too far for us to get food from, but DoorDash will bring it. Because because I I mean I love the restaurant experience I love going to restaurants mm-hmm. but uh, when when you can't I'll, I'll I'll keep I'll keep using them as long as we need to yeah but to go back to Disneyland that was the other thing was I was craving the Disneyland corn dog the Disneyland, you, yeah I saw your Disneyland, picture about that the Disneyland corn dog is uh, is an absolute marvel of arc uh, of, of, of 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 both cuisine and structure because it's enormous wow. and it's just hand dipped batter it's fantastic. And no other corn dog is like, even like really good county fair corn dogs don't compare to Disney. Really? Yeah. And so I was like, I got, I got, I got. So, so, so that was the other part of, the, of, of what we, you know, we were not going to go on many rides because I don't want to be inside with lots of people, but outdoors is pretty safe. And the, the, the corn dogs are in a cart. And I can walk right up. It's going to uh-huh. be great. Uh-huh. The only like, and like the only show we did that day because I figured it would be safe. Well, great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Nobody's ever in that theater. Sure. It's be fantastic. So we went in there. I said, there's never more than seven people with Mr. Lincoln. Go inside. One, two, three. Seven. <laughs> it's the back corner. So there's nobody behind us. We cough. Watch we'll watch the robot Lincoln give his speech, get a little teared up a little bit. It was fantastic. Yep. Yep. So that, that, that's been the extent of my of our leaving the house for a while. Do you know why people go there to to Lincoln? Oh, the air conditioning. Not- there it is. <laughs> I remember, you know, I'm, we have Florida, so they had that here, the Hall of Presidents. Hall, Hall of Presidents. And yeah. we're all like, I don't know where we could go. We got that, but we have to wait a half hour. Oh, they have air conditioning. Yeah, all right. I feel patriotic. Let's go. You're guaranteed to doze off by, by, by William Howard Taft. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> oh, they all have to make a speech? Oh, we don't need this. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. Right? Yeah. Um, I've been living vicariously through your disney and you know avengers trips i'm like oh i gotta look at every single one of his pictures and oh fact, the the avengers campus is 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 fun it's it's very well done yeah it seems it yeah and and, the, and they're smart in that because the, for whatever reason they couldn't uh, they, they couldn't build the second um main ride the e-ticket ride so the only uh, ride they have they have the, they have the guardians ride and the spider-man ride but the avengers ride is still yet to come okay so it's a little short on rides, but they make up for it with the characters because the characters are everywhere. I saw the Spider Man up on the I, building. I, yeah, yeah, and the, and he and when he swings through the air, and it's a robot. He just does flips. It's unbelievable. Really, it's a robot. Yeah, it's an animatronic spider. Basically, there's an actor on the roof of the Spidey ride. He comes out and he does, he's an acrobat. He does all kinds of flips and he climbs up a bit, and then he's gonna go to he does like a a, a bigger web sling test. And you know, he ducks into a door, and then that's when they fire the Spider-Man animatronic, who just tumbles and swings in the air, and then lands over the side, and then the actor pops back up on that side and swings down the building. Oh, that's cool. It's so well done. I love that. And, like, the Doctor Strange has a great, like, magic show where, like, the, the, the it opens up with him pushing the doormat move back inside, and it's a really, really good effect. And then they have, they have uh, the Dora Milaje come out and teach the kids how to fight. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. Uh, full, 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 and really, and these the the actors they got playing uh, the, the Dora Milaje are just spot on. They look really good. And then all through all of this um, Disney Plus stuff, it's been active. So every week when something happens on a show, it's in a park. <gasps> so oh. like, as soon as soon as, as as the series was over, they that was right about whenever they opened. They had both Steve Rogers cap some days or Sam Wilson cap some days walking around. Really? And, yeah. And with Loki, like the first week, Loki was in his his, his coveralls with the handcuffs. Next week, he was in the business suit. 
the next week it was it was President Loki. Damn. So the, as stuff gets added to the universe on the TV shows, they're going to be added to the park. That's smart. I'm you yeah. know it's not that difficult to do, and you got to appreciate the effort that they're making. Well, for the, the right now. Disneyland is doing their, it's just starting their Halloween stuff. And they're doing it at the California Park this year. It's like a special ticket event, which is actually, these days, it's kind of the best way to see the park because you pay 100 bucks, but attendance is super limited because it's a nighttime thing. And you get on the, you can get on the rides pretty fast. And then they have all these special Halloween events. And they have all these meet and greets with all of the villains. Well, in Marvel Land, Agatha Harkness is there. Oh. It's the, the actress they got playing Agatha. If you didn't know it wasn't Catherine Hahn, she is spot on. She's really? Spot on. Yeah. It's so they're really play they're playing it really well. Well, that's why when I saw the pictures that you had inside the what was it, the Spider Man store. Yeah. I, I was I sent you a text. Is there any Daredevil things there? Yeah, I Because <laughs> I, I, I love Daredevil. I want <laughs> you know, and I'm I, you know, I'm a sucker for it's like going to the Indiana Jones thing. Well, I want Indiana Jones stuff. You know, and and last time I was there, again, this is late 90s, um, I bought myself a new hat. For my mom. mom. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and, and I'm like, well, I saw the picture that somebody took of the hats, and the hats are now gray. Whoever, like, is producing the hats at the moment, they're not brown, they're gray. I'm like, well, that's got to be disappointing. You know, but they have the jackets. I'm like, oh, yeah. the jackets weren't so expensive. I want a jacket. You know, but it's it's Candyland. You want you want gimme gimme. And it's the same thing for the Marvel stuff, or even the the Star Wars stuff. Sorry, the the, the the hammer the 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 in the the Star Wars land, they uh, the they have a hammerhead from the cantina owns the antique shop. Um, <laughs> And on the walls are like props from everything. Every every kind of imperial helmet, mask. They have a wampa in there. There's an IG-88 robot in there. But then you can buy you can buy the lightsabers, and then you can buy all kinds of costume props. I remember you telling me about walking through with the lightsaber in your back yeah, in the first yeah. and the Jedi thing. Yeah. I love that so much. That's the exact perfect response. Every time I see it, I think of you doing that. Like you know, I, I, any Star Wars thing where they do this, I'm like, oh, Scott got to do that. <laughs> But yeah, and, and what they do it with that too, they they refresh it. So like, as new right now, they're they're actually bringing in sabers from some of the books, sabers from some of the video games. Oh. So every time you go in there, there's 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 new stuff. Yeah, somebody told me they they you can either uh, I think you were saying you can either do the lightsaber or build a robot. And yeah. the the one guy that I worked with, he went because they go every year. They the kid wanted to build a robot. Well, the robot was cool. But the father's like, do you know how expensive this stupid thing is? He's going to play with it while we're here and then never, ever again. I'm like, I, I, I know, but still, it's an official Star Wars thing. <laughs> Droids aren't cheap, but Ooh. yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be, I just, it, it, it's like looking at your shelf. Yeah. That, I love all of, the got your Doctor Who's up there. You know. Yeah. Uh, hot, hot, hot Toys, especially, is a weakness. Hot Toys is this company out of out of Hong Kong and does the amazing six scale action figures and yeah like for the Marvel stuff they did basically every 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 armor variant for Iron Man every character and it's, again going back to Back to the Future they just I was just gonna tell you the the third movie finally just not today because they made they made the, they made a Marty and the DeLorean a few years ago and and but the only doc they made was doc for number two where he's got the weird oh. Josh, Yellow. It's, it's cool, but you want Doc Brown. You want the white coveralls. And so back then I had the shop. So back then I could buy a DeLorean and get it for wholesale. I would never buy one now, but back then like, I, I could justify this. Half price? I can do half price. Yeah, yeah. But then they, they, they never made the good Doc Brown, and they never made the ones from number three, the Cowboys, which I love. Uh, me too. Me so too. I, I, the, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they're getting my money on those. Well, my son is getting the, the smaller ones, the action figure the ones from Nika? Yeah, where yeah. where yeah. it's Marty. Um, he didn't get the first Marty. He got Marty 2 with the hoverboard. Yeah. Uh, which I prefer as far as a look. I love that red jacket. Yeah. yeah. Right with the gray arms. That is, yeah. I if I could pick one of those up for myself, I would just because I love the style. Yeah. And so he got that, but he still, you know, I could have got the, uh, um, the Biff Tannen for him. But he's like, yeah. 
maybe someday. He's not top on my list. I'd rather go with the, the main two. Yeah. You know, so maybe for his birthday or Christmas, he'll get um, Doc Brown. He wants he wants all of them. He wants all the Martys, all the Doc Browns. He wasn't crazy about the one with Marty in the um, the yellow mask. The, the, the red agency. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't love that one either. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, but now they have the one where his hand is disappearing. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> where did you get the... Um, the Iron Giant figures, they're like that big, right? Yeah, those are from a company called called uh, Re- Super 7 Reaction. Okay. And I, I just go right through their website. Okay, see, I, I didn't know if you were at a store or if you saw them through a website, because I'm, I'm showing Mikey, I'm like, look, because our family loves that movie. Yeah. Look, you got that one, you got the one where he's going to go to war, and then there's the one with the S on his chest. And the fact that they give you a, a little... Isla Hogarth. Yeah. 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 No, those are those are, those are are at the uh, Super 7 website. It's a great company. They do they do all kinds of good stuff. They, they really, they basically, they're trying to do everything in the classic 70s Star Wars three and three quarter size. Good. So they, they have Z and Light just all on that scale. And they do also sell them on Target stuff. If you go back okay. to Target's, the, the that little collectible section of Target back by the way in the back. That's where I am. <laughs> That's where I go. I, all right, here, kids, we're gonna look through the aisles and this nice. Uh, well, the the findings at all these stores, I don't know why. There's nothing. They don't. They haven't restocked their shelves since Christmas. Well, this this is the problem every toy company is having. Is it's not that the toys are shortage. It's a container shortage from China because of COVID. Uh, oh, there yeah, it is. There's all this stuff is back because I've got friends in the toy business and all this stuff is backed up in huge, huge uh, crates waiting to get on containers in China. They just okay. can't get containers. That's so, what it was. So I mean, it's all coming. But there's going to be like a three month lag on a lot of this stuff. So. If, there, if, there's, if there's stuff you want for Christmas, start buying now because Christmas might be a little bit short sales. Well, the, uh, <laughs> I feel like I, I, I'm on to a secret when you and I know about that hidden back section yeah. behind, <laughs> behind, behind the books. Yes. It's like right at the wall. I'm like, come on. we got there. The kids would be, why? Why are we going there? I said, <laughs> yeah. they have Funkos. They have Back to the Future Toys, oh, they oh, the, got the Godzillas, the Migos are usually back there. Yep, yep, and they always have the monsters and things like that. Well, now they're to the point where we go and they're like, "Can we go back to that back wall?" Like, <laughs> obviously, yeah. What am I gonna say? No. Like, how do you how do you walk into a place that that you know it has toys and not go check out the toys? Yeah. I know you understand that. Not everybody does because I'll go. Well, wait, we just came to get pants. I'm like, good, you get pants. I gotta check out the toy section. I'll meet you in Lego. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. What were you going to ask? Have you seen what make what Mego is doing now online? Uh, remind me because my Mego, boy Mego is really has teamed up with Tops, the sports card company. Okay. And is using Tops's reach on their website. Every Monday, there are two new Migos that are only available through the Tops website, and they, they, they and they change up the uh, the license every every week, and they're available for a week and they're gone. Who do they have? This week was Green Arrow, and it was like the Mike Grell version with the hood. Sure, sure, sure. And, Ra- and Ra's al Ghul. <gasps> and then there was one week, it was uh, Zira and Charlton Heston from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and then there was one week, it was, um, okay, what was it? Uh, it, was two, it was two from Star Trek, and one of them was the John Colico's Klingon. Really? The one oh, the- I saw it, yeah, because the other one was Spock from... Spock in, in motion picture. Yeah. yeah, and okay. I th- so so uh, ch- check the top site every Monday. This I think there's one more week. And what then are the prices? Twenty bucks each. Okay, that's worth it. Yeah, for me, that, 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 that's what they're charging at, at Target for Amigo. You're gonna create. You're gonna give me a new addiction, <laughs> man. Because I'm telling you, I I look at the pictures of you know the great things you get. And I'm like, son of a bitch, he finds good stuff. I want that. Oh, or, you know, or even if it's not even a thing that I'm really into, I go, no, I get that. No, he should get that. Yeah, that, yeah. If I had the money, I'd be buying that too. You know, because it's like, um, well, all right, here's a segue that I've been dying to tell you, and I'm sure I did text this to you as I go along, but you did it again. You get me hooked because of your stories. Uh, You get me invested in franchises that I normally wouldn't get into like i i read because i told you they had the they might as well have called it the scott tipton sale 
um, on comic bookology, it was a whole bunch of Star Trek and, you know, all the crossovers. So anything I saw your name on, I'm like, getting that one. <laughs> getting that. Oh, he, he said I, I should get that one. Sorry. I'll get the the um, Planet of the Apes Star Trek crossover. So I read that and I loved it. And I'm not big into either one, but just like with the Doctor Who Star Trek one, I'm like, well, I guess now I am because I, I want more of this, you know. Yeah. So I read that. And so now I'm like, okay, kids, Mikey in particular, let's watch Next Generation. Oh, yeah. But not the show. Let's go to the movies. Because the show is, we talked about this. Once you see Picard, which I'm on my last episode today, I started it. Um, it's hard to go back. Unless somebody can give me a list of must-see episodes, it's not easy to get through that steady, you know what I mean. Yeah, the, the, also, I mean, just in terms of tone, it's very different than Picard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there, there's an aggressiveness about Picard that, that you don't find in Next Gen. Next Gen, Next Gen is so firmly both feet in the, the world of Roddenberry's Utopia. Yes. They're yes. there to negotiate, but in the fact that we're out, they have to. There's not much negotiating in Picard. No, no, no. It's, oh, no. crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. Yeah. By the way, the second season looks incredible. Yeah, well, anytime you get, you get Q involved, it's going to be, you got my attention. Well, with me, time travel and alternate yeah. realities, you know, yeah. that that's my weakness right there. But so so you went to the movies for next year? Well, I, yeah, because here's what I'm thinking. With Mikey, I said, let's do, and I know we talked about this, the, um, the new Star Trek movies, because we could always go backwards. I didn't want to start at the slow motion picture original one from the seventies and blah, blah, blah. that makes sense because I I maintain that's a great movie. That's a great movie to watch once you're already in love with Star Trek. Boom, there because it is. That cold, it's it's gonna it's gonna seem weird and slow. I was a kid who my father watched Star Trek on forty four, and he's like, "Oh, look, the movie." So he pops it on, and right from the beginning, they're showing the ship out in space, being docked. And I'm like, I, you know, again, I'm a kid. I don't know anything about Star Trek. And I'm like, I don't. These are guys just standing around talking. I don't. I'm a little kid. I need action. I want stuff. Now, at my age, and like you said, with the knowledge, you go back, you could go, okay, now I can sit here and watch it. So a few years ago, I watched Khan. Uh, but I thought with Mikey... Let's get the more action-packed, newer version. And also, he can't stand William Shatner because he understands yeah. the Shatnerness of William Shatner. And I've told him that, and he could see it in a lot of things. So we watched the the we watched the three, and I think we talked about this because you haven't seen the third new Star Trek movie, right? right. You saw the first two. Yeah, I only saw, I only saw the first one. The first one, okay. The the, the, the the very the first Abrams one. I, I didn't see two or three. Two's really good. Three. I don't have a complaint about it, but uh, uh, Simon Pegg wrote it, and Simon Pegg loved Star Trek and wanted to make it like a typical episode of Star Trek. Okay, and he accomplished it. Here's the thing: with the first two movies. There's an epicness, like a whoa, like this, things matter, and you're watching a different time, you know, you're getting to see Khan become a different version than what we originally knew, and blah, 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 blah. third one is just like, yeah, here's your Star Trek. No complaints, it's a fine movie, but it's the weakest of the three, you know? Okay. So, but I never saw the third one, so I watch all three with him. I'm like, okay, now that you got that, Let's get into Next Generation. Okay. So I had him watch um, Generations, which was as much William Shatner as he figured he'd be able yeah. to take. Because, again, it on, on storyboard, it sounds good. They're going to meet? These guys are going to meet? I, I love that. And then we got done with it, and he went, it wasn't as much a crossover as I – thought it was going to be yeah you know well, what i mean the, the, the problem was you know the, the the original cast had just made their big goodbye in in number six and then they try to get everybody back for for this 
but it just did a limited part and they wouldn't come back. Mm. It's just uh, Nimoy said no. Uh, DeForest Kelly said no. So that's why they only have you have Shatner and you have uh, well, Scotty. Uh, Scotty and Chekhov in the one scene in the beginning. Yeah. Um, Generations is a good movie, but it's a flawed movie. Um, there's a lot I like about it. There's a lot I really like about it. Um, I love Cameron Fry as Captain of the Enterprise. Right. Right. Uh, uh, John, right. I, to the point that in, in one of my books, uh, in, in my my, I have a book called Spock Reflections, where I have see. The, here's the one thing I hate about Generations is they leave Kirk's body on that planet. They bury well, him on the rock. right, right. That James Kirk's body should not be on that rock. Well, you know why? So, you know what happened? He wrote sequels, and I went on <laughs> Wikipedia, and I'm not going to read the sequels. But I went on Wikipedia and got the gist because they kind of speed it along. And basically, magic, yeah. magic, he's back and alive. By the way, Rote is generous. I, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll never correct it. Uh, Jet's generous. But so Spock Reflections is basically Spock going to Viridian to take Kirk's body home to Iowa. And then along that story, along that, that, that four issue series, I have all kinds of flashbacks from Spock, from various movies and TV shows. And I had to include one with Spock going to meet the Cameron Fry, John Harriman character from Generations, who Ooh. still plays himself, I'm the guy that lost Kirk. And oh, never, good. He, and he's good. never gotten over it. And, and, and Spock's come there, and, they, and then they're down in like the, the, uh, the, the part of the Enterprise uh, B where Kirk was lost. And no one knows it's there, but Harriman has put a plaque down there. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, there there is some great stuff in Generations. My biggest problem with Generations is that the Kirk death is nowhere near epic enough. Kirk deserved a much right. bigger. Yes, if he's going to die, he shouldn't fall off a bridge. I mean, wait, what's what's crazy is that's the improved version. Really? When it was, originally, uh, Malcolm McDowell just shoots him in the back and he drops, and that's it. Wow. And, and, they, and they, they took it to, to, to previous readings, and people were like, "You Kirk did what? You shot in the back? And they were livid. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at least, I mean, in this version, at least Kirk is doing something active and heroic when he dies. But still, it's it needs to be bigger than that. I, uh, I'm getting this. I, it was one I hadn't gotten yet, so I'm just I'm getting it on comicology while we talk. Well, Spock Reflections? Yeah, 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 yeah of yeah. course. I'm telling you, and I'm not saying because, you know, I like you. I love what you and your brother write. If oh, you, sure, you not, you're welcome. You really make it again. And you're talking to a guy who is not, I don't consider myself a, a Star Trek, Star Wars guy. It's only been the last bunch of years that I've even gotten into Doctor Who because of your crossover. And now we're a Whovian family. So Star Trek is, I'm getting into more of that, but it's because whenever I need a, a, a rev up. Yeah. I do that. So right now I'm looking at the mirror stuff that I bought. Um, and I, I'm now reading the first, I figured better go back to mirror image. I got the title. Mirror image, that's the very first one. Yeah. yeah. It, it still, it, it still holds up, but it's not part of like the big saga we're telling right now. Right. But I figured if I, I didn't know which of the other two I should start with. So I thought, well, this is easy. This yeah. is, Generation One. I might as well read that. Yeah, and then, basically, with, with with the new stuff, Mirror Broken was our introduction to all to all Mirror and Next Gen stuff. That, okay. had, that had never been done in the TV show, so we got to we got to do make, make up all that from scratch. Okay, so it is Mirror Broken is the yeah, next Mirror Broken, and then through the Mirror, they they immediately wanted a crossover. They wanted they wanted the, the Mirror crew to meet the to meet the real crew. So okay. through the Mirror is that, and then the third one, Terra, is it picks up on a thread from that. Okay. Okay, and then, then it goes into this war. Then it goes into this, yeah. So the war is connected to those others. Oh, very much so. Good, because I'll be getting that. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting to get that, because it'll drive me nuts if I go one by one. I'm like, no, I'll just get the whole collection. <laughs> cool. be because I'm reading, um, I just read the interlude with uh, the evil Picard. Yeah. Where he makes himself captain. I'm like, oh, see, yeah, I love that. And the fact that Spock became emperor. Yeah. Yeah. That, I don't know if that was set up previously. That, 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 that's 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 canon from the shows. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's good stuff. I yeah, I, you're right. I, well, I, I, like... they, they, I mean, if you if you're not if you're not a, a, a classic Trek guy, right? 
that's one of the episodes you can just watch cold and the original Mirror Mirror episode that introduced all this. That one's great. I you watched watch the first. I showed Mikey last night. He's just about ready to drift off because again, reading at night before I fall asleep, I'm like, oh, uh, you know what? Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. On YouTube, they have like the first up to the credits. Yeah, where where they switch and you know they yeah. come out of the thing and they're like, oh crap, this what are we wearing? I showed Mikey. I said we're gonna have to watch this episode. Yeah, that that one holds up really well. Yeah, the tribbles I've I've seen obviously. A um, couple of tribbles. So, uh, so you got through generations. Did you move on to the next next gen movie yet? Here's the thing, I I saw that one first contact in the theater. Now. For a guy who was not into Star Trek, to spend money with my buddy, we're like, I don't know, we want to go see a movie. You know what? Let's 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 do first contact. It's so funny. I, we um we watched that last night just randomly. I have that prime so, so for him. Fresh, it's fresh in my mind. Yeah. And so first contact is amazing. Right. First contact holds up like crazy because of a couple things. Besides the idea of whoa, this is the first time they they're an alien, blah, 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 with James Cromwell. It's a great Picard story, and it's a great Data story. Yeah. Like, Data's the hero in this. Yeah. And I, I remember that. So I'm dying for him to see it. Because it comes out strong also because as much as the first generation of the movie I liked, it, would, it wasn't about Picard's crew. It was all about the Kirk and Picard meeting. Mm -hmm. And everything was kind of constructed around it. This, you got this brand new ship that looks badass, mm -hmm. and you're seeing the crew doing what they do normally, and this it feels like a Picard, Picard and crew movie. And then they, they had been so disciplined with the Borg in the series. In the series, the Borg appeared maybe three times. That's it. Get out of here. There's the, there's the first appearance, right? And then there's a big two parter where where Picard gets gets Lucius. Uh, gets, gets, uh, gets to transformed, and then they bring back the Borg maybe once, and only in a sense of they find a runaway Borg and kind of take him in, and it's question of should we can we can we keep him or not? Like he's a puppy. It's a good episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they've character. referenced him. It's a new character from 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 the Picard series. Right, because they mentioned that. Yeah, that, that that's from the that's from, that, that's from original next gen. But that's all they ever did with the Borg in the show. They were very disciplined about it. So then, when you bring them back in first contact, it's like now they've got you. you the, you've got uh, a little bit of money to make them look not just weird but downright scary, and it becomes as much a zombie movie as anything else. Right, as much a horror movie as anything else. <laughs> You're right. It, it, it works so well. And like you said, they, they give a strong emphasis to Data in that one. Data gets a lot to do. And by the end of, of next year in the series, Patrick Stewart was getting itchy because he'd been brought in, and the idea was going to be Picard stays in the ship, Riker goes down below. By season five or six, Picard Stewart wanted to be doing some action stuff. Sure. And you can, and this one, he's like, I want an action piece in this one. That's why, I mean, as, as the, the, the movie goes on, Picard's uniform is coming off in bits and pieces. Well, by the end, he's just got the red under tunic on. And it's like, welcome to the gun show. You see <laughs> climbing the cables. And we were watching us night, and my girl was like, look at those guns on Picard. I'm like, yeah, right? Because he's like, he wanted to be doing action stuff. So my he's got great stuff to do. And the, the, the other thing that's weird about it, because there's the old B story with them down on, on Old Earth with James Cromwell. Mm -hmm. Where they've got to they've got to make the first contact and get that rocket in the air. So you have this up on the Enterprise is basically a horrifying zombie apocalypse where Kirk is or where Picard is having to like murder his own crew and pull parts out of their bodies for information. It's absolutely nihilistic. And then down below, Riker and Jordy are like having a great fun vacation, hanging out with the father of Warp Drive, <laughs> and every day, every scene they're laughing it up, and it's it's like. Well, you guys had very different trips. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that's I'll tell you, that's how the third um, Abrams Star Trek is. You have a B story and an A story. And the B story, you're like, oh, well, Simon Pegg gave his character more to do. Yeah, see? And here's the thing. Riker was very disciplined about that, right? Because uh, Frakes directed First Contact. Hmm. And Riker is very much, he doesn't give himself a lot to do. Right, right, right. Was like, you know, it's not my. This is this is not my story to tell. Okay, like, he did what Nimoy did. Like it was the first film Nimoy directed. Spock is in for like five minutes at the end. Which one was that? 
That was uh, the search for Spock, number three. Oh, okay. okay. I think it, a lot of people uh, kind of diss that one. I think it's very underrated. I like sure. number three a lot. Sure. Number number three has some great moments in it, and uh, <laughs> another smug, obnoxious captain, kind of like John Harriman. And it was James B. Sicking, the guy from Hill Street Blues. Uh huh. And he's like he's the only Starfleet captain you see with a pencil thin mustache. Ah, oh, jeez. And a trouble. writing and a writing crop under his arm. <laughs> Like, really? You, you know that guy's gonna be a dickhead captain. Yeah, he had to be. He had. To, oh, thank you for my. I yeah. need this. Thank you. Put it right under there. Steps off the transport pad with the right grab. Day one, the crew's like, "Oh, this is gonna be a bad." <laughs> yes, sir. Whatever, sir. Just yeah, okay. no, first, first contact holds up. Yeah. The only one I never saw, I think, from the originals was Undiscovered Country. Undiscovered Country is good. Is it? Undiscovered Country is very good. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll give you know, it a shot. Country, Undiscovered Country is Nicholas Meyer. Nicholas Meyer is the man who wrote and directed uh, Wrath of Khan. He, he, he wrote all of the San Francisco material in Voyage Home. Okay. And then he, he came back and did, and did Undiscovered Country. Okay. And this, this was Nimoy's last Trek movie as director. And this was basically during the time of Glasnost and, uh, and, the, and the fall of the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. And it's Nimoy's take on that with the, with the Klingons stepping in for the Russians. And um, what Nicholas Meyer does with it is he takes that as a backdrop to tell a Sherlock Holmes murder mystery. Okay. It's really, okay. It's really, it's really fun. So I'll really do fun. that. All right. I didn't, I, I wanted to hear it from you if I should bother because, you know, like I, through, I don't know, coincidence, I happen to catch a lot of the originals. Yeah. And, I remember loving, of course, the the time travel one with the whales. Yeah, see, and all 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 the old San Francisco stuff is Nicholas Meyer. There you go. Yeah. Um, and now I saw, like I said, I saw the the first contact, which I'm going to show him. But then there's what two more movies? Well, in, in the in the original six, there's 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 motion picture, and then you have two, three, and four, which right. are basically the Spock resurrection uh, trilogy. There's number five, which is Kirk and Kirk and goes to meet God. It's a rough one. It's a hard. What's that one called? It's it's called that's that's uh, Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier. Okay, didn't see that one. Uh, It sounds like I didn't miss anything. Okay, good. Basically, it's it it, it came about because one day uh, Shatner and Nimoy were having lunch, and Nimoy had just directed number four, and it it came out to great acclaim, doing well. And then when he says to Shatner, you know, because of the contract that you and I have that dictates, because back in the day, whenever all of a sudden Spock was super popular in the old TV show days, yeah, they signed a contract that says whatever Kirk, uh, whatever Shatner gets, Nimoy gets. So their pay was always the same because that was the value that Spock suddenly had to the studio. And then when he says, you know, well, because of our contract that says whatever I get, you get, you now have the right contractually to direct a Star Trek film. And Shatner says, "Well, I think I want to direct a Star Trek film." <laughs> so all of a sudden, William, William Shatner directs Star Trek V: The Voyage Home, uh-huh. and the uh, the story they come up with is is uh, going to meet God, and we are introduced to Cybok, the Laughing Vulcan, Spock's heretofore unknown brother. Oh, hello, God. And then, uh, yeah, th- there's this, this. It's just, it's just bad. It's that bad. sounds bad. That doesn't bad, sound okay. Bad, I, bad all around. So there's two of those I haven't seen. And no, then five, I, you don't, you probably don't need six. Undiscovered Country, which okay. is the like I said, the 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 the, the fall of the Soviet Union. That one's great. Okay. Uh, Generations, pretty strong. First Contact, fantastic. And after that, there's Insurrection. Okay. Insurrection feels like a pretty good season finale of the TV show. Okay. It it it, it, it it's kind of like what you said. Where it it kind of lacks the big stakes. Of a film, you can't in places, but it's still very good. Okay. And then the last next generation film, unfortunately, unfortunately, is Nemesis, which has some problems. Right. I heard they make a clone of Picard, and it's yeah, and it's 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 Tom Hardy, by the way. Tom Hardy. Yeah, (laughs) I know. Which doesn't look like him. I was born to be the (laughs) cat. Right. Like I don't. I look. I even now I look at the pictures. I'm like, wow, that's the same guy. The biggest, the biggest problem, I think, I, my, my, my sense is with Nemesis is they brought in a director who did not know Star Trek at all. And sometimes that can be good. Nicholas Meyer didn't know Trek when he came in. Mm. But once he did, he had a respect for it. Sure. 
And this director, and, I, and their, the, their interviews with the cast where they're talking about it, this director had no respect for the show or the cast. And it comes out in the performances. They don't look happy. Oh, that's so, so yeah, Nemesis, eh, not so. Yeah. Not so, so, so I was trying to get through uh, Space in the Mountain all Picard, and but I wanted to watch it before we talked, and I got 15 minutes into the second half of this last episode. What are your thoughts on, without the ending, but what, are, what were your thoughts overall on the first season? I will be honest. I have not seen Picard. Okay. Um, but also, bear in mind, I am pretty much absolutely spoiler-proof because the, for, for everything I do, I can't avoid them. So I know everything that happens in it. Sure. So do not be afraid to talk about it. You, you will not spoil me. No, the only thing, no, the only thing, again, I'm learning. I don't know, yeah. I'm no, uh, don't have my doctorate in Star Trek, but I, 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 it reminds me a little bit, and this is just a me thing, this isn't a complaint about anything really, um, with the original Star Trek, especially the movies, they really, I always hate when they focus too much on the villain, in, i.e. the Klingons. Which has been always been my problem with anytime I'd watch a Star Trek, whatever, I'd go, we don't need to focus so much, typically, on the villains. The same thing, you could do the same thing with Doctor Who. I'm watching, well, I'll segue into that in a second, but I'm watching that on um, the classic episodes now on Pluto TV, which is an app that's free and whatever. Oh, yeah. Basic, it's all the Viacom shows that I guess they have the right. I was, I was watching the first contact on Pluto until I got 10 minutes in and commercials came out. And I'm like, well, screw this. I'm getting my Blu-ray. This yep, is dumb. I, exactly. <laughs> um, but since I never got to see a lot of the classic Who, yeah. I'm like, all right, I can do this. On a lazy Sunday is the best way to really enjoy those. Yeah. But if you're not focusing on the hero enough, Everything gets watered down, and it just it. And I always felt that with Star Trek, at least the original um, movies, I don't care about the Klingons other than they're the bad guys. And with Picard, I love, I love whenever it's him and they're dealing with. Wait a minute, what happened to Data, and what's going on with this other robot? Blah 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 blah. blah. That's great because again, as a newbie. I can sense what things mean. And, ooh, that yeah. does that. So after the last movie, you know, the Federation basically falls apart and isn't the Federation that he was part of. So he kind of flips them the bird and gets out of there. Yeah. Great. Love it. Good. There's your great story. But then they, they go into this whole thing with the Romulans, which I don't, I have a hard time telling the difference between them and, and the Vulcans. Because they basically look the same. The Romulans have worse haircuts. Yeah, <laughs> Which, all look like, they all look like Mo Howard. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, exactly. So there's a side story with that where it's a spy and they're on an old Borg ship and blah blah blah. blah. Maybe it's because I don't know enough. Maybe, but I'm watching it going, uh huh. Okay, let's get to the. Let's get to the fun stuff now. And whenever they do, like his new crew, mm -hmm. great. And you get to see members of his old crew, which he stayed close to. I'm like, yeah, that's that's there are there are beats in that that pay off beautifully. Like when he goes to see number one, and, you yeah. know, and he's married to Troya, and they have a kid, and all of that. I'm a sucker for that. So I went and I bought during my buying spree of Star Trek books. I bought the Picard prequel. Okay. At, at first, I wasn't going to. I'm like, I don't know enough about this. A lot of times when they do prequels to this new series that is good, it's filler. There's no real, you know what I mean? It depends on who's yeah. writing it, but I've, I've been suckered before. We go, oh, the X-Men movie prequel. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing really happens. Okay. You know. Was that Picard one by Mike Johnson? I can tell you. I'll look it yeah. up. I'm pretty sure it was. But I figured, you know what? Now that I, they, the way they talk up, uh, Picard, I'll tell you what you say. But the way that they talk up the events that happened, I'm like, all right. All right, darn it. I'm, I'll read it. Uh, yeah. Kristen Beyer and Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson is really good at those prequel books. 
Mike Johnson was the guy who, who he also wrote the main ongoing Star Trek comic based on the Abrams movies for years. Okay, right, He's right, 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 right. And if you want a good, a good prequel, get Countdown, which was the prequel for the very first Abrams Trek movie. And that's all Mike Johnson. And he did a kick-ass job on that. Really? Okay, let me look. Countdown, just so I know if I bought it yet or not. Uh, okay, there you go. I think, you know what? I think I did. Yeah. I think I bought it. Wait, I think I bought. I might have to rebuy it because I think I bought this when. Yeah, I did. I bought this on paperback. Okay. When it originally came out, yeah. when I was yeah. still buying books. Yeah. Um, no, if, if you see Mike Johnson on one of these prequel books, you know it's good. Okay, it's good to know because I will rebuy it now because I really like that first Abrams movie. I mean, the whole fact that they they change things, but they do it where nothing else got wiped out. That's right. smart. That's how you. That's how you're supposed to do things. Yeah. Uh, just, just a, a, a quick uh, uh, side, side check here. Mm -hmm. I was talking about Nicholas Meyer previously. How he, you know, he did uh, all the good classic Trek movies. Yeah. Have you ever seen his first film? Because I just noticed they just put it back up on HBO Max. What is it? Time after time. Time after time. Who's in it? Because I'm. It's it's Malcolm McDowell. As H.G. Wells. Oh, I want to see that. Chasing David Warner's Jack the Ripper oh. through 1970 San Francisco. I love the whole idea of all of that. If that were a comic book, I would have bought they, it. They just put it back on, they just put it up on, on HBO Max. There was a show that was basically that. Did you know that? Like a couple but, of years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it went away fast. You know why? Not that it wasn't quality, it was a good show because I watched it, but. I watched it out of a fluke because they never advertised for it. And when they put it out, they put it on Saturday night at 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's a death spot like, for it. What are you doing? Like, this is this had great premise, you know? But yeah. anyway, it's good. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite movies. Okay. Movie, period. I'll that's, yeah, see it. I, I just see it. I had never seen it in HD, and it's up on HD on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah. HBO Max, by the way, that Turner Classic Movies Hub. Yeah. So many good movies, and to keep adding more. All the classic stuff you can't get on any of the streamers. Well, see, okay, because I have the Fire Stick, and that's how I got that Pluto station. I don't even know what made me find it. I just maybe I saw an ad or whatever. I thought, let's check it out. Beep, boop, beep, boop. And I load it up. I'm like, wait a minute. You have almost everything. Like they actually show MacGyver yeah. on a Saturday night. Um, now, granted, I have all the episodes. I can recite them to you, obviously. Well, same thing. But if it's convenient to go click, click, what do we got on today? Oh, this one. Okay. I think Pluto also, Pluto also has the James Bond channel. It has the James Bond channel. It has wings. It has family ties, happy no, days. Pluto's good stuff. I'm telling you. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Let's. Okay. Since you know, I can, I can vent with you. It has great stuff, but it also has garbage. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, 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 all the good stuff. I'm talking. I kept going. Like, what is? Ooh, what is that? Really? You know, you know when they say there's ten thousand channels and nothing's on. Yeah. Well, there's some channels that you're like, why was this a channel? Granted, they have the kitten channel where it shows like a mouse or a bird, so your cat is entertained. They have <laughs> really the, the world that's, needed this. That's what you call niche marketing. <laughs> and then yeah, oh, it gets worse. Then they have the puppy channel, which, okay, hey, who doesn't want to look at puppies? And there's a kitten channel. And I found one which is soothing, which is just riding a train in Germany. Ah! The, ca the camera is put <laughs> on the front of a train. Check it out. It's at the very bottom. It's called the slow, it's called slow TV is the name of the station. When you want to relax and mellow out, okay, you're not in the mood for doc the old Doctor Who's. Put this channel on because it, they strap a camera to the front of a train in Germany, and you ride it. That's bizarre. And so you're watching. Okay, That's so you're bizarre. following it, but you're watching. You know, there there's some barns going by, and you wouldn't <laughs> know it was Germany until they talk. It, it looks like North Carolina, and you're like, okay, boom. There's there's a car. There's some highways. I wonder why those cars are driving on the wrong side of the street. Oh, whatever. And <laughs> okay, and then they go, black and spoken, black and bleaking. And it comes to a stop. You see the people who were waiting to get on. It, you, you stopped for maybe, I don't know, a minute and a half. Boom. And it starts again. And then you just ride. And they go through tunnels. And But I'm talking about what about an, an easy, easy channel? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're like, I don't know, how do we do this? Put a camera right there. And that's it. <laughs> Six hours, we're good. And then Loop. they go then they go to the next episode, which is, oh, that was Sh- Stockholm, Sweden. Now <laughs> we're gonna go into Splock and Splink and Spooken. And then it's it's oh, they have one where it's niched for the seasons. You're driving through winter. When you go into a tunnel, you come out and it's summer or it's fall. I just imagine somewhere there's got to be somebody at home wearing like a pair of lederhosen. Like, ah, it's the Dusseldorf. <laughs> this is a good one. Record it. Record it. <laughs> but I'm telling I, I was fascinated by it because once I started this, I'm, you know, you're curious. Let's click around, see what there is. And I still haven't gone through all of them. But I'm like, okay, at night when I want to unwind, there's nothing wrong with having that on. It's it's like watching Earth Cam where it jumps around. You get to watch people in, you know, New York City Times Square, or then they'll jump to a field in Canada or whatever. And yeah, okay, that's that's relaxing. But then yesterday <laughs> they have food TV, which it's a whole block of food stuff. Great. Hmm. The first one though depending on the night, it's basically the Gordon Ramsay channel, which, by the way, a couple notches up is a Gordon Ramsay channel. But this is showing, like, the old, his original Kitchen Nightmares, where okay. it was very low budget. Yeah. It's just him going into little villages in England and going, what the F are you doing here? Oh, yeah. uh, it's horrible. And, and sincerely, as always, trying to help them. Yeah. But it's much more down tone. There's no big, you know, Americanized. We have to keep things moving. So, okay, that's fun to rewatch, and I'm showing my son. Yesterday, however, it was Bong Appetit. I'm like, what is this? Out of curiosity, drugs? What are, what are we doing? And it shows these <laughs> three or four stoners trying a pizza. Oh, by the way, and they don't bleep out the cursing in the Gordon Ramsay shows. So... They don't bleep it out in this show either because it goes, hmm, pot leaves on pizza. That's effing delicious. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, guys. I, I'm, not, I'm done. I, and I changed the channel. But then I, as I'm flipping through later, you know what the next show was? I kid you not. A food show called It's It's Effing Delicious. <laughs> so, you know, as much as you said, there's great stuff, which I can watch forever. Wings. My son is discovering the magic of how good Wings was. Yeah. Then you go down further and you're like, okay, that station didn't need to happen. Oh, there's a block of just video games. Yes, it's just that. people playing video games. I, 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 I guess this is where I, all of a sudden I turn into Grandpa Simpson. I do not get the appeal that so many people have of watching someone else play a video game. I'm with you. I'm there's, with like, you. there's like thousands of YouTube channels and the numbers are huge. So they're, they've got viewerships. I don't get it. I don't know I, how they get, I, get it. it. I, I, how long have I been doing this? I, I try to put out something entertaining for people that's not mind numbing. Yeah. These guys are like, look, I, I took a pee. Th- some of these channels, I made a, cru- a, a, a crusade something. I put a little pee in the middle. They get like subscriptions and viewers. And, and I know. you know, I'm like, how are you make how are you making a living? Yeah. Off this. And where is your integrity to try and give more to the world? <laughs> right. How are you um, – so much I've been dying to talk to you about. Um, how are you liking the Marvel shows? Um, overall, I, I mean – I'll start from scratch. Uh, WandaVision? Sure. A revelation. Wow. Yeah. That show had no right to be as good as it was. It had <laughs> no right to be uh, – to, to work as well as it did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazing. And probably – because it, it, it was supposed to be that, that Bucky Falcon would be on first oh. and then One Division was going to be second, mm-hmm. but they had to switch them up because of the pandemic. Because since One Division was primarily a studio show, they could get it done first, whereas they had still had lots of location stuff to do during COVID. Mm-hmm. So that, that's why Bucky had to wait. Okay. And I think it turned out good because by leading with One Division, it got all the viewers who were expecting a Marvel movie and gave them something entirely different. And kind of open up to okay, there are going to be different kinds of shows, and I think it, it kind of like gave the it, it gave the audience the kind of warning that Marvel TV shows can do anything mm-hmm. that might not have gone over well if if they'd gotten the usual first with with Bucky and Falcon. Sure. One of it I thought was amazing. 
I mean, if there's any justice at all, um, uh, Paul Bettany will get an, will get an Emmy for that thing. Because, right. Um, I, and, and she was great too. She was great. Agatha was great. The whole cast was good. But but Paul Bettany just broke my heart. Right. Right. The, 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 that the, the the two scenes, the one the one where he's the flashback where he, where um, what is what is what love. Grief? Yeah. What is what, what is what is grief but but love love persisted in me. Oh god that goes and then the whole bit with Theseus with the uh, Theseus's boat with the two visions. Oh, yeah, yeah, that conversation you're expected, was great. You're expected to end it with a big slug fest, and instead it ends with a philosophical uh, uh puzzle. I love that. That that was and so I mean, smart. Yeah, and I love the white. I mean, I prefer the real classic vision, but I sure. love that John Bird story with the white vision. And yeah. when you see the white vision, he looks exactly the same. Exactly the same, but even cooler because they do the thing in the eyes. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I want, I'm hoping next time we see Vision because he was white when it ended, let, let's see more of that. Well, I, I, think, go, you know, I mean, the but, way I read the, the way I read the ending, uh, the, the white vision now has all of the classic visions. He does. Memories and those emotions. So for all of the verses, we've got the vision back, just yep. the white version. Right. So, WandaVision, I absolutely love. Yep. Uh, and the fact that they set her up to be the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Like she's like, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. And uh, just, yeah, you know, I'll see you later. But hmm, you'll remember when you see me. And she flies off, and you're like, oh, yeah. oh, they're setting this up for the Doctor Strange movie, aren't they? So then, then uh, uh, Bucky and Falcon, I love that one. And yeah. that was more traditional Marvel movie storytelling. Yep. But they still, they lay a lot of stuff on you as far as, like, the political stuff. And it's, it's all good stuff. Sure. I, I thought I, the, the, the bringing in the, the John Walker was great. I love I love to give me the U.S. agent. I had a, on one of the episodes, I had a debate with Nate because I was like, I pointed out the fact that the kid, it's just a passing comment. I said, you know, the grandson was ignorant. He was rude. And he was. Uh, and he's like, well, you know, wait a minute. Whoa, if you lived in that neighborhood and you, and he was trying to justify this kid being an a hole. And I said, mm -mm. how you, he had no reason to treat these guys coming to his door politely. They weren't barging in, they weren't obnoxious, they weren't puffing up their chest. They just politely asked to talk to his grandfather, especially when the one guy says, I already know him. I'm not harassing you. Yeah. You just need to talk to him. You guys better get to step in and, and like get try to be a tough guy. Well, my point was, I get it. They're in a bad neighborhood. They probably get harassed by police, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't justify day-to-day -day bad behavior. Even if you know the origin of somebody's bad behavior, every day is a new opportunity. See, I, see my, I didn't mind that. My take on that is, I mean, that kid's an asshole, not, not as much because of his surroundings, but because he's being raised by a, a thoroughly unhappy uh, father figure mm -hmm. in, 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 in Isaiah Bradley. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's a much, much a function of him living in that house with this guy who feels, who's, who feels like he's lost everything in his country uh, has completely abandoned him, which it has. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't mind that. That whole house is hostile. Oh, I so thought it was great. Yeah, yeah, and I agreed with that. And I wasn't saying that it was wrong. I was just saying that the kid was wrong to treat these guys who are going to. Oh, yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. Right. You, and, you, you shouldn't be looking at him and saying he's right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then and then just to kind of like see, all right, maybe I mistook it. I read into the character, and he becomes, obviously, uh, in the comics, he becomes one of the young Avengers. Yeah, yeah. But I read up on the character, and they said, no, he's an a-hole. He, yeah. he, he's, he's loyal as can be, but to a fault where yeah. he's too hot-headed. I'm like, okay, yeah. so they wrote that well. Yeah. Okay, good. And the the stuff with with uh, with John Walker as the new Captain America, yeah. Well, something about his face in that costume, you just hated him from job right from the one. beginning. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they they really made him like. It's that it's when they, I saw this recently on something too. Oh, I know what it was. We'll get to it when we get to the the Killmonger and the What If. You go, boy, you're reminded like somebody with that much power who's not wielding it correctly. Just like John Walker, yeah, you're like, yeah, that's scary. Like, well, that's did you did, did you ever read the original John Walker comics from in the Captain the Captain America run? Uh, a couple. It was it, it was Mark Grunewald and Kieran Dyer, and basically the government comes to Cap and says, "Look, 
we gave you this costume. We found the contract. You're still under active duty. You were, we work for us directly. You no more Avengers. And so Cap said, no, no, thanks. Right. So he, he becomes Nomad, right? Isn't that? No, 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 no. Nomad was the 70s when he was fighting Nixon. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and this one, he eventually becomes, he just, he just calls him the captain. And he wears the black uniform that the U.S. agent eventually wears. That he designed, Steve designed that outfit. Nice. But in the meantime, the government goes and gets this dude called Super Patriot, who was John Walker. And and, they, they, and he was just, just kind of like a, a publicity seeker, but he was also super strong. And so they hire him to be the new cap. And they bring in the Taskmaster to train him to be the new cap. Here's how he used the shield and all that. And in the comic run, it's really good because they do the same the same basic storyline where, where uh, Bucky, his buddy Bucky gets killed. And he gets really, re but instead of Bucky being killed, his former sidekicks give away his secret identity. So like these white supremacists kill his parents. Oh. So it's a, but it's then the same scene where he just goes to town on him with his shield, and murders him, and the government like, now what do we do with this guy? So they took all the emotional beats of the comics and kind of transplanted it well into their story. I thought it was really well done. Yeah. Well, I also love the small moments of. You can't tell me Sam Wilson knows how to throw that freaking shield. I mean, like Spidey said, it doesn't follow the rules yeah. of, of thermodynamics or whatever yeah. it was he said. So he can't just go, oh, here, here's a shield. Oh, thanks. And be able to wield it like Captain America? Not a chance of God's career. So the fact that they show him just and give Bucky, me the montage. Give me give the, the montage. montage. Yeah. And meanwhile, they're having a deep conversation with each other, and they're missing. They're throwing yeah. the shield and it's not coming back to him. Like, there you go. Log logically, he should not be anywhere near as good as he is already. But that montage gives me enough that I can let it go. Sure. And also, yeah. we didn't get to see everything. Maybe he'd right. been doing it for a while. You know that after what we saw, he was still practicing with it. Yeah. You know, and the, the whole thing of throwing it, and now it's coming back at you and you catch it like this. Yeah. And the shield, that's going to chop your, if you don't know what you're doing, I, I, I would need it explained to me by some, you know, actually kind yeah, of guy yeah. to how, at what level does it become a weapon that slices a hand off or something that you can catch? Well, yeah, well, you, 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 you know, he's not catching it. He's plucking it out of the air as it goes by. Which I like. Yeah, I like that. I'll do, I'll do that. I believe that. <laughs> I'll, I'll use that because yeah. there are times where they saw him go, ting, I'm yeah. like, not straight on, you're not. Yeah. And the Baron Zemo stuff was great. I love that they put him in the mask. Yes. I love because, and it made sense because, again, and you know this, as you're watching it, you're like, some of these guys in the comics had stupid outfits, like the Leaper. There's no reason for that guy to have to wear a mask, but yet you kind of want to see it. I want to so see it, or, or at least the mustache. Yeah, <laughs> and, and with Baron Zemo, he looks like a whiny accountant. Where, where's yeah. the? And then when he goes like this and puts the mask on, like keeps and, you in and, that. And and then you realize, oh, his jacket has had the fur collar the whole time too. Yeah. So like, All right, they they get it. And he's such a good actor. He he's is. Such, he's, I love that bit where they're, where they're walking up to his jet and they're like, so so you're rich. I was a baron before your friends destroyed my country. It's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> And you kind of get his point of view, too. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't but, like a black and white thing. It was a, yeah, I don't like the way you're handling it, but yeah, you could, you could be ticked. You get to be. They're, they're either talking about um, music or books on the plane, and he says something about some uh, particular African-American artist, and, and Falk is like, no, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's crazy, but he's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, thought, yeah, I thought all of that stuff was good. I did. I thought that I thought Bucky and Falcon was great top to bottom. Yeah, me too. Me too. Because and, the dynamic of seeing them together from oh you annoy me, bah, 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 to being like brothers in the end, you go, okay, there. There. And one thing the TV shows are doing too is if you look at what the TV shows have done compared to the films, they're not afraid of costumes. I love it. I love I mean, it so much. When you finally get Wanda in the Scarlet Witch oh, costume at the end. Oh, man. we were so happy. The the and whole then, family and I cheered. And whenever you get Sam in the in the in his Captain America costume, they didn't change a thing from the comics. And then like, all right, once if you take us along the way, if he'd had that at the beginning of episode one, it would have felt like too much. Right. But by building to it, it's like, all right, that's what Cap looks like. Now I'm in. And right. then you get then to give him a chance to give the Steve Rogers speech. And the Steve Rogers speech, boy, they they walked close to the line where I'm like, 
because again, we live in a world where everybody wants to stand on a soapbox, yeah. and preach. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Black guy becoming Captain America is going to make it all about him. Oh, this is going to hurt. And then I'm like, okay, no, they, they, they didn't. Because he made it about the fact that he doesn't have all the answers. Right. He's and not saying what it is, but, he's, but the only way he knows how to go about it is to get out there and try. Yeah. All right. Good. That's the speech. Very smart. Yeah. So that, that was great. And then I thought Loki was amazing. How about that? My wife was like, because again, I always felt, not that I have any complaint about any of the movies, but. I didn't think Loki had to be in every single Thor movie. And, you know, because there's, there's other villains they could have used. Nah, 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 nah. Not, again, no complaint with what they did. But when you go, oh, Loki's going to be in this upcoming one again? Okay. Oh, more Loki. All right. And my wife was like, oh, he's just so smug. I don't think I'm going to like this series. I said, have faith in Marvel. Marvel shows and movies have not let us down yet. And right away we watched the first episode she's like okay yeah yeah you got yeah. me all right this is great i love this and because they do they they address they have them go look at look at look at i know you're a bad guy you spin they shut him down over and over again yeah so at no point do you feel like you got a watered down loki no and and, and also in that first episode where you see him looking at his own future <gasps> and all the things that he would have done had he uh, had he not been plucked out and it, it's like it's like you you don't get the same character who's actually grown, but you get a character who can benefit from that knowledge and then go somewhere else. So it's almost the same as getting him back. And it, but it, the and all credit to Hiddleston, man, you believe it in that moment whenever he's watching all that stuff. And, he, and when he sees what he did to his mother, oh, it's so good. Oh yeah, because go that way instead of that way. Yeah, like oh. Yeah, that was that yeah, whole was thing really was so fun. good. And um, uh, Owen Wilson, Mobius, love, great. love him. Because and I guess that 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 really got to me because he's playing he's playing Mark Gruenwald, the Marvel editor. Mark, my, my mentor in comics was Mark Gruenwald, and uh, he was the editor on everything from Captain America to the Avengers in the eighties. And then he passed away super young. Oh. And um, but no, we, we, uh, he's the one that actually got me into comics and got me into the idea of writing comics. And I was going to go work for him. It's a, he, was, he was a great guy, and he died super young. But they based the char character of Mobius in the comics on him to the point that it even looks like him. Really? Yeah. And they put the mustache on Owen Wilson, and he looks like Mark Romo. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing tribute to him. It's that so is... good. I yeah. didn't know that. I just, yeah. you know, I, I, lo I love... Owen oh, Wilson, so I'm like, yeah. oh, and, and, and again, yeah, and putting 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 all the inside baseball aside, Wilson plays it great Wilson against Loki. So good. Yeah, he he's able to he's able to hold that shot with with, with Wilson every time. He's great. Like uh, Loki does this big speech, and I am the god of mischief. And blah blah blah. Ah, oh, you're precious. Like he kind of just like. Uh, uh, no, and then in the middle of that series for a few episodes, all of a sudden it becomes Marvel Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh, different, different places. We said that as we're watching it, the one episode where they're walking around him and her and they're on a doomed planet and here, you know, the rocks are coming. I said, does this feel like a 13th Doctor episode? And they're like, yes! Yeah. Right through the whole thing. I love yeah. that you figured that out too. And that, that bit where we're on the train and he's singing. And at first he's doing like a happy Hobbit type song. And then all of a sudden he's doing the sad Aragorn song. And it's like, oh man. This guy's got some range. It was, it was Loki. Loki was great, and then the biggest surprise of all, which kind of really wasn't a surprise when you saw the stuff that later into it, is uh, is what they're doing with Kang and Immortus. And I didn't even know that that was Kang at first. It took me a minute because I'm like, oh, that's right. They told they said that they had cast somebody as Kang. Yeah. Oh, because they never call him Kang. They never call him Kang. No, no. He and the, and the version he's playing based on the costume is Immortus. And Immortus and Kang are the same guy, just thousands of years apart. All right. And they're, they're, they're also the um, Rama Tut is another time-traveling bad guy, and he's in the Fantastic Four comics. He's also the same guy. He's also Kang. Wow. So that I'm sure at some point we're going we're gonna to see Jonathan Majors as Rama Tut, and I hope that when we see him in Ant-Man, he's got the full suit with the blue face and the whole nine. I mean, give him the vision treatment where you go part makeup and part CGI. Mm-hmm. I agree. But, but as far as that performance, I mean, that, that last episode is basically 
35 minutes of it is just a monologue by majors. Yeah. And he sells it. Yeah. I, 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 the fact that they can, <laughs> the fact that they can make you like Loki and the fact that they can have on all these series, take the time to have deep philosophical conversation. Yeah. And you're, and you're like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't talk. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta watch, you know, you're so invested in it that the room has to be quiet. I don't want to hear a pin drop because I want to hear everything because every word means something. Yeah. And I thought the way they introduced and played out with Sylvie was super well done. Mm -hmm. The actress was great. Yeah. And of course, the only person Loki is going to fall in love with is himself. Himself. It's, yeah. it, it made perfect sense. And I love that. So they, smart. When, when they, they mentioned that he is bisexual, they didn't call it out. Because a lot yeah. of people are like, look, they confirmed it. Okay, good. But you didn't they didn't do the CW mistake and make a series about it. Right. It was it was a line, you accept it, you move on. It is not what should be focused on. And yeah. I would I said to the family, I said, see what they did? What? And I explained to them and they went, Oh yeah, we didn't even notice. I said, Yes, yes. that's yeah. how you do it. And then when you do it the other way, you're doing it as a disservice because it's pandering. It, yeah, well, not part, it's partly pandering and it should be discussed like anything else, and it's just part of being human. Right, right. And the way he discusses it, it's just part of being human. Yeah, that's that's it, and it, it doesn't need focus. Exactly. The, the exactly. mention, the mention is the, the mention of the, the there. That's enough because that, that that just means it's just a part of your life. And you move on. So smart. Yeah. So smart. Um, and of course, we're getting sequels to these shows. I don't know if we're going to get a Wandavision again. I don't think so because that's that, that's hard to pull off. Again. That was a one and done, and, and uh, instead we're getting Cap three for the movies, right? And then I think they're going to do a uh, Falcon Winter Soldier or Cap. I, I don't American know. I mean, if, if you if you got Sam Wilson in a Cap movie, do you need another series of this? I, I the way that they did it, it looked like I maybe Possibly. I'm wrong. But we're definitely get, we're definitely getting season two of Loki, right? Which I yeah, thought, that, ooh, that, yeah. I don't I don't think they expected that one, but the show guy got got so hot so fast. That they ran into that one, and then I don't know as far as as far as what what else has happened. I'm only two into what if. I just I've gotten busy the last few weeks. So I'm like I've got three to catch up on. Okay, buckle yeah, up, buckle up, because yeah. it's okay. I always loved. I'm sure you did too. The series, the comic book yeah. series. Oh yeah. Because even if I didn't know the original story, you could always hop into any oh. issue of. <laughs> oh, there, <laughs> there you go. Um, you could always, I snagged a couple of those too, uh, on Comicology. They had a sale when What If came out and I'm like, all right, let me see what stories they have. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. And then they have the newer ones, which are stories that I know the original. It depends. Uh, some pay off, some don't. I'll get some of those. Of course, anything with Spider-Man or Daredevil, I'm going to get that because those are guaranteed yeah. to be fun. Um, but when they get into like Thor or... Some of those others, I'm like, I don't care if you when, know. When it's a little too cosmic. Yeah. It, oh, what happened if the Eternals kidnapped Thor? I don't. Or, whatever. Or, I like the ones where it's not even a jumping off point that makes sense. Like, there's, I think it's issue number six or seven. It's, what if Nick Fury and the Howler Commandos fought World War II in outer space? Right. Right. Like, what? What? What, what point was that ever? What if? I think I have one of them over here too, <laughs> but I, years ago. I got the, it's going to bother me, the what if when they first came out with the first paperback of the greatest. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, one was Daredevil as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I didn't know enough about S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time. But they had what if Spider-Man became a member of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fun. But with this series, they are sticking to the cinematic universe. Yeah. Which is smart. Yeah, I, it is. You know, because uh, uh, you and I get it. Right, we, we know we know all the guts of it, but the average viewer who call did I ever vent to you about this? It's funny because we live in a world now where there's comic book readers who would love the movies, but there's movie watchers who think they know the comics. Yeah, right. right? It's that new generation of oh yeah, I know all about Mo Marvel. I've seen all the movies, and yeah, we just it, go. It, it, <laughs> It, it does not transfer both ways. Yeah, like you, you don't, you don't, you know nothing. I worked yeah. with a girl who was said that, huh? I, I can out Marvel you. I went, mm -hmm. yeah. go yeah. ahead, really. please, 
start anywhere. Let's let, you know, if uh, this is your funeral, you bury yourself as much as you like. Well, with the, with the what if series, they can't touch the comics because the viewership wouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just for, and just for it to work, you can only play with the, with the toys that most people have seen. Right. Right. But they have enough there that I'm telling you, they could At this so point, they have nothing. Yeah. Ooh, what okay, so what ones you've seen? Um, saw, the first one was was uh, was Captain Carter. That was great. <gasps> right? The animation and the action was fantastic. Love that one. And then I saw uh T'Challa Star Lord. That was fun. Yeah. That was interesting too to have like Thanos be talked out of being Thanos. And then, and then they're like, dude, that's too much. No, no, I really think it would work. <laughs> yeah. And I was impressed with how much of the cast they got back too. For that one, there's a huge voice cast. You're gonna keep seeing that right, too, right? Right down to even getting back uh, Jeff Bridges at the end. I, I mean, know, not Jeff Bridges, uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah, I know. I'm like, well, you know what? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's it's easy money. Plus, you just go into a sound booth, you say your lines. You know, uh, now, those two are the only ones I've seen. I think. Okay, well, they're good. Yeah, they no, I know they're great. Good. I I've just been busy. I have not, I have not been like you know. Uh, holding them off. Well, that's the other thing too. I know we talked about this, but I'm always jealous of your Sun or Saturday cartoon collection. Oh yeah, <laughs> like you're you, you see things. I don't know. You must have bought these. I'm guessing. Uh, what, I, what I've been doing with this, is I, I pull them all off of streaming. So they are on streaming. HBO Max has all the. Oh, Super HBO Channel. Max. Yeah, HBO Max, and, and then Mar Disney Plus has all the Marvel stuff. Okay. Disney, Disney, Disney has the, the, the only thing that Disney Plus is missing is the original 60s Spider-Man, the, the Grand Prix Lawrence. Sure. That doesn't have the detail in the chest. Yes. But, I mean, all, all of the, the Marvel stuff from the 90s is all there. Wow. And, and, the, and the 80s. So, you see, they got both, both versions of Spidey. So, yeah, I, I just dig through those, and I dig through the, through the, the, the huge Super Friends. Because Super Friends is like 12 years. Yeah, yeah, of, I know. Of, of mostly terrible stories. Mostly. <laughs> I, again, like we said last time, that last season I loved so much because the art got better and the stories got serious with Superman dying. That rattled my little world. Yeah. I'm All like, right. stupid Firestorm? Well, what, did you see Suicide Squad? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. Well, I, I'm pretty sure you saw it then too. Yeah. Thoughts? I loved it. Did you? I, I I loved it. It's it was very much in the vein of the John Ostrander suicide run sure. from the from the eighties and nineties. Um, I thought though I thought the way he set it up with the complete left turn of the of the the, the first the first squad being can of fodder was genius. Me too. I and thought the that fact was good. It, and the fact that it did leak. Yeah. So you came to it you're expecting. A lot of those guys to be around for the whole movie, and they're just gone. Gone. And yeah. and gone in a bad way, too. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, <laughs> I think uh, the, the kid from Saturday Night Live. Yes. Yes, yes. Hey, maybe we, we shoot him in the face and Mealy's he's going to get my vote. I hate that kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me. He me bugged too. me. And then I'm, I'm sure that's why Gunn cast him there. We need somebody hateable right after go. Yep. Yep, and you do. But, yeah. I thought I thought that it was by far Margot Robbie's best performance as Harley. Yeah, she's great in everything. I yeah, really but I think she had but I think she had better stuff to work with here. Mm -hmm. And 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 then Star with Conqueror. Who so, ever thought we would get Star with a Conqueror in a movie? Agreed. And, and do it straight, not and not trying to to kind of like fake it. No, mm -hmm. we're talking, you know, Star with a Conqueror. They're holding on your hearts. That's so scary. That's, yeah. that's that zombie, oh, crap. Yeah. These guys that we thought were dead, that all they landed on and fell. I'm like, wait for it. And then they start to get up again. Like, uh, guys? Uh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, there, you're in trouble. And yet Gunn Gun still managed to make you feel bad for him at the very end. Like, I was looking at the stars, and I was happy once. Was like, oh. yeah. 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 It's good. I'm telling you, I, I enjoyed that part of it. The things that I didn't like. And again, I'm always looking to love whatever. It's it's my complaint with a lot of the superhero, DC in particular, TV shows, where if they could be foul, they think they're putting on their big boy pants. 
and let's let's be as vulgar as possible aren't we cool look at we're grown-ups they do that we talked about titans have you i don't know if you've been watching titans yeah, this titan, season titan, 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 titan is, is such a a balancing act because it's there is so close to being great yeah but there is stuff like that where it, and I, I think it's funny i think what you're talking about is a lot more in evidence in titans than i do in suicide squad well, the, the other half of this, my complaint of Suicide Squad wasn't just because you're right. It wasn't as vulgar as the trailer, the Red Band trailer made me yeah. think it was going to be. Because they pretty much give you all the vulgarity in the trailer and you go, okay. Yeah. So when I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, good, they aren't tightening yeah. it up. They're, they're not cursing every chance they get. But they were also doing the Tarantino random kill stuff where – which. You know, I get it. Suicide Squad. Nobody's not. They're not all going to make it. It was the setup where it became predictable. Like I'm a super. Here's my lighthearted moment. I'm a superhero. Splat. Like I saw. You know what I mean? Like I can tell it. Okay. You're basically watching these guys like a zombie movie. You're like, one or two of these people are going to live. So now we just have to wait for them to ease up. The moment that they relax, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of there's a lot of gore for gore's sake, but I think I do think that that a you know, this is a one kind of movie where you can do that because it is a, it is about about basically disposable resources. Yep, yep. And and that's also been a, a, a gun kind of thing that he has toned down in his Marvel movies, mm -hmm. but in his own movies, he's he, he is the guy that likes the gore. So I mean, that's what he wants to do. It didn't bother me as much because even the even the characters who got who get killed horribly. Are well drawn enough that you that you like them and that you it, it, it they were gory deaths but they didn't come across as gratuitous because you actually cared about those characters right. even the, even you, the, even as little as you got out of them like polka dot man I love David Desmulchin and I'm everything sorry. he does yeah uh, did you watch speaking of which did you see Long Halloween uh, that's, that's, is the new animated yeah 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 there's oh, part, part one and part two are now out and David Desmulchin plays Calendar Man. Oh, that can be good. All right. Uh, it, yeah. they, it's basically let's let Batman be a detective. All right. It's I'm not right. about the it's not about the explosions. It's about like, wait a minute, who yeah. the heck keeps you know? And it's supposed to be at a point in his life where he goes like early on where he's going. I think he says a line like, you know, when I started this, I didn't think Batman would have to be a detective. I just thought I had to go beat people up. Yeah. You know, it's good. It's yeah. it's it's um, they always give you something new with those animated movies you never feel like oh this is the same thing i already saw with, with suicide squad i think the biggest surprise was john cena i thought he was surprisingly good he's getting his and, own series you know yeah and okay. I'm, I'm, I'm there for it sure but, i mean a lot of times when because I, I i mean i'm a i'm a wrestling guy so i've never been a big fan of john cena as far as thinking he was really funny sure he was funny in this but yeah. he was all but he was also believable i thought he, I thought he, even though he was playing it for laughs when he does the things he does at the end, as much as he's being an asshole, you don't really think of him as being a villain. Right. He, he's as much a doctor in this world as everybody else is. I thought Idris Elba was great. I wish that version of blood of, of um blood sport. Uh, that, blood sport. I wish that version was in the comics. It's a lot more interesting than the one we had. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And well, the biggest improvement for me is the way they handled um, Amanda Waller. Because Amanda Waller in yeah. the first Suicide Squad movie is a is a sociopath. Yeah, she should be she should be on trial mm -hmm. because she just murders her own people like like, I, like boom boom people boom boom for no reason. And I mean, you 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 get executed for that. That's treason. And this one and Amanda Waller should always be so so revved up that she's almost at that point where either she doesn't do it or somebody stops her. Right. And here they have that point, and then clang, they stopped her. Okay. You're not right. gonna you're not gonna kill these people for doing the right thing. I thought that was that was the the, the note where for me this whole movie works around that moment. Yeah, I agree. I agree because at that point I remember thinking, unless somebody turns on her, they're all dead. Like there yeah. is it, and it, at that point I thought, please don't let that be the ending where you think, oh look, we killed them all. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. No, you you need a happy ending. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you do yeah. it for shock for shock's sake, then I just yeah. You, I, I've seen movies. Where they do that, and in the end, you're like, Alien, Alien Three, ruined Alien Three for me, because yeah. like, that because at this point we've seen Ripley live through two movies and uh, and, and uncountable odds. I get wanted to have the, the the big dramatic ending where you kill your protagonist, 
you can't do it after three movies. We're in too deep now. Agreed. Agreed. And the little I, girl died in the pod. Like, oh, what? that was the worst. Killing off, off? Newt, killing off Newt and Hicks during the credits, they lost me immediately. I know, me too. I remember feeling, I saw that in the theater too. Yeah, I did too. I was like, I was so angry. I couldn't even enjoy the rest of the movie. I went, oh, what the heck? What? Yeah. I, it's amazing. And, you know, it's amazing when it happens with shows. And it's a, also amazing, though, that a movie, because of all the hands it goes through, but somebody loses the original guts of what it was supposed to be yeah. because this guy wants to have a say and that guy wants to have a say. And you ruin it. At the end of it, before it goes out to the public, somebody, I know many people look at it. Why did nobody say, uh, we have to fix this? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. We watch, uh, I don't know if you watch Stargirl. I'm I'm I love last season and I, I they're, they're built up on my DVR. I'm gonna go ahead and get to them. Okay, this last season is starting or this last episode is starting to pay off a whole lot of build up for the second one. But there's a scene as they go to commercial where the girl is gonna clang um, stripe in the head, the robot, mm -hmm. and she goes like this. But the actress, because they're not really gonna have her club a prop, yeah, she swings too high. And it's supposed to be as they go to commercial. So as she swings and as it's supposed to make contact, it goes to black and you hear clang. But they really should have refilmed it because I kept my mouth shut, but the rest of the family spoke up. When she swings it, she's this far away from the top of the thing. Nice and, and it swings all the way through before it goes to black. So it's even shown that it missed. Oh. And then you hear clang. I'm like, oh, somebody should have been paying attention. Come on. Oh. Uh, have they used Gaff again as a Thunderbolt yet? Uh, yeah. How, how is that? Guy, I'm looking forward to that. He's great. They do it in a way where they could have overplayed the, uh, we're zany, like the CD, or the CD, the CW shows tend to, because we can, we're going to do over the top. He's Thunderbolt. He's not, he's likable. But he's also a prankster. Yeah. And they kind of, yeah, I won't spoil it for you, but well, it, it's okay. good. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And they, and again, he doesn't play it as a, yeah. eh, you know, with the crazy not, voice. super wacky. Yeah. I would like with Suicide Squad, I wouldn't say it's Gunn's best movie. Mm -hmm. I think Gunn's best movie is still is still the second Guardians. Sure. Because as, as good as this, as good and as much as I like Suicide Squad, it just didn't have the heart that, that the Guardians movies do, and especially the second. Agreed. Agreed. There, I was I, still, I was looking I for can't... the heart. Yeah, right. And it's hard to get with this with with this these characters. I still can't watch the end of Guardians two without balling every time. Oh, me too. Me every too. Time. They play Cat Stevens. Yeah. And I'm yeah. you know Mary yeah. Poppins, y'all. Like oh, once you see Craglin seeing the lights and doing the salute, I'm like I'm done. Oh, for me, it's the whole thing about him telling him about how he's his dad. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Like, uh... So, so uh, the, I, I mean, I'm always surprised when I see people who who that movie didn't work for, and I'm just like, who hurt you? Are you dead inside? How You'd have you, to be. How, how can that? How can that not wreck you like it's wrecking me? <laughs> well, I'm I'm t I'm telling my son because again he's at that age where he is he's dying for this next spider-man movie and of course we want daredevil in it and daredevil's supposed to be in moon knight and daredevil's supposed to be in hawkeye and we're praying but again i don't want to be spoiled yeah. i don't want to read too much i don't want to see too much i think the teaser trailer is the only trailer you need because they told you more than enough yeah but yet we're going to get another trailer yeah. and He's reading stuff on like, he goes, oh, did you see where um, uh, Bane? Uh, yeah, Tom Hardy was wearing a No Way Home hat. And he's, you know, that, that makes people think that he might be in the movie. I said, stop doing that. You're going to spoil it for yourself. Yeah. Because we live in a world where like that, you can know everything about what's going to happen. Have you seen Shang-Chi yet? No, because it's only in theaters. Same I'm here. I'm dying to see. I, I, I miraculously, yeah, I have managed to remain unspoiled. Me too, because again, as soon as I see that Chang Chi, I'm like, gone. Not what? Not yeah. get out of that Twitter. I don't want to see it. I'm going to see it on Tuesday. A buddy of mine rented out a theater. You're going to have to let me know. Yeah, really, so, rented out a theater? Yeah, that's a good so, buddy. It's going to be ten of us. Well, they're doing that here in LA. 
where they're for, for like off for off nights, they'll rent out a theater at a discount rate so you can just have your group in there. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm dying to see that. And I hate that I've had to wait because normally I'm oh, home, you know, you can just I, watch it. I was so bummed that first weekend because it was the first time I'd ever not seen a Marvel movie opening night. It was killing me. Me too. Me too. Yeah, and not, but I'm like, okay, two more days and I'm open. Well, and okay. then Eternals comes out, which again, I'm sure Marvel's going to do it for me again. They're going to make me care about Eternals. Yeah. I've never liked Eternals. That, I don't know that, anything about Eternals. That's, that, that, if they do it, that's going to be a good trick because the comics have not been able to do it for me for 50 years. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, again, I never cared about Thor or Iron Man until their movies came out. And it wasn't until that last trailer for Eternals that I began to get a bit of a, oh, okay, this could be good. Yeah. The first, yeah. The first couple, the first teaser and the first trailer are kind of yawners. Yeah, I was but like, this, I don't know what they're doing. It's a bunch yeah. of bright lights and we're eternal. Okay. But this was, okay, we got, we, we started to get a bit more of the action. We started to get them more in their costumes. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, this, this might be good. I mean, Lord knows I've tried with Eternals over the years. Have it's you? Just, it's, it's Jack Kirby. I want to love it. And so every, every, like every 10 or 15 years, I'll pull the issues out and I start now like, I just don't care about all this, any of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no hook. Even, and I think it's, everyone always says it's Kirby without a strong writer. And that's true to a degree. Sure. I mean, Lee and Kirby together are never as good as Lee separate and Kirby separate. Mm -hmm. But Lee had other good, Lee had Ditko. Lee had Ramita. Lee, Lee had other people he could work with and, and make that same kind of magic. Kirby never found that same magic with another writer. Mm -hmm. I and know. So that's a shame, too. Because when they'd say that he would write stuff, they're like... The and imagine, yeah. imagine if we could have gotten Kirby with a Gardner Fox over at DC. Or, a Kirby, or a Kirby with somebody who... One other, one, or a Denny O'Neill. And just oh. really let them go. But even that, with Kirby, when Kirby has a great idea and a hook... That's, I mean, the, the new gods. The new gods totally works because there's that family hook. There's the dark side story of the pact where you have the, where you have Mr. Miracle. Switching babies. And and switch the babies. And so you have this father-son conflict on two sides. And there's a family struggle at the core of all of this big cosmic craziness. Mm -hmm. so, that, so those books work really well. I mean, when you read them, it's like word jazz. I mean, sometimes the sentences are, are more just because of how they sound than, than actually communicating an idea. But they're still really readable. Mm -hmm. I try and read Eternals. I get to like issue three and I'm like, yeah. it just doesn't work. I know. And it's so weird because at the same time, Kirby was doing good work for Marvel or other places. Mm -hmm. You ever read Kirby's 70s Captain America? Oh, sure. You're oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're hanging out in the jungle. And Arnim Zola shows up, and he's got a robot with Hitler's brain in it. It's great, really <laughs> great comic. But but Eternal just I can never I can never find someone to care about. I Mikey, uh, one of the things I told him too was the trouble with the internet. You're always going to have people, no matter how great something is, no matter how much you and I love, you know how great Marvel is. He's seeing things where. What's the worst Marvel movie? I'm like, stay away from that because you're yeah, always going to have negative why, people. Why do you need that? I don't understand. That, me too. I'm like, just love it. You, you don't – and he loves to rank things. He, he loves order. Ever since he was a little baby boy, he's like, okay, in the morning I'm going to get up. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to go to the bathroom, and then I'm going to change. And it, it was adorable. But I said, don't let the internet do that to you because they will – you know, wear you down and ruin things that you love. Just love what it is. Well, here's the thing, like, no, like, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm, there's something about ranking that I really enjoy too, but along with it has to come the knowledge that I still love the last thing in that ranking. The last thing is still good. It's still excellent. It's still it doesn't mean far it doesn't, superior than anything right. we've had in the last 20 or the previous yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. The, the one thing, I think we discussed it before, but I'll, I'll be a dead horse just a bit. <laughs> sure, why I not? just don't understand if somebody posts something about how they love something, why do you need to jump on that person and say and say why it's I up? hate it. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. Know you know what? It's like, okay, fine. Go hate it over there. I got one for you. I was online, and this was just in that vein. Somebody asked like a, an open question about um, cursing. And the point I was trying to make when I just did it innocently, had I known this was going to happen, I never would have bothered. But 
I said, you know, uh, some of the people that I know that curse, I grant just about everybody in this world curses. So they should have understood what I was saying. Yeah. I said, you know, everybody curse. Or I said, a lot of the people that I find that curse are, have been, and I'm thinking of specific people, either low intelligence or low class. Now, that's a comment. Let it go. It just added it. And I had other things in my little tweet. But people, I don't know why they felt personally offended. It's like, wait, we're those low class, low intelligent people. Yeah. How dare you call us out? And it made them look like buffoons for giving me crap. Yeah. But at the same time, why? I try to be nice. Didn't get into a Twitter war. I just said, look, I'm sorry. You misunderstood. I know everybody curses. And it can be hilarious. Uh, um, comedians do it all the time. You know, we, it can be brilliant. Yeah, but when someone relies on it, that's and, as a verb, adverb, yeah, and now, and overdoes it to the point that it, it doesn't have any impact. And at that point, they didn't want to hear it anymore. Two people, I had to block because, like, no, I don't believe you. Because I explained myself. I said, "Look, I, I'm sorry if you misunderstood. I meant this. Nope, you're a jerk and you're an idiot." And I just went, and we're done. I tried to talk to you as a person. Gone. And it's that poison of. Like you said, the social media thing, yeah, and it really bothered me because I'm like, wow, I did not see that coming. Yeah, and what, what, what I've been doing lately is when I get somebody who all of a sudden wants to come in and sourpuss something, because I mean, you see my 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 social media, I o almost exclusively only post about stuff that I like or I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. If I hate stuff, I don't I don't give it any any, any bandwidth. Right, and so. When somebody comes in and, and, and starts being just absolutely just, uh, here's why it sucks. If I can't turn them on a point where it's like, okay, maybe it doesn't work for you, but this is what I liked about it. And, and then they get, I get, and I get back nothing but, but more negativity. I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, all right, your mileage may vary. And then I don't even engage. <laughs> I'm telling, I know. And I, I, it breaks my heart. Because we're supposed to be able to communicate and love all this great stuff. We, uh, as I, we've said before, we are in a golden age of superhero pop culture greatness. Yeah. We got we have TV shows about what if and Loki and right. holy crap, you name it, we can have it. Yeah. Why poo poo everything because it's not as good as what I had in my mind? Then shut up, don't watch it. You and know my, my um my position on on cursing. Whenever, whenever blast off was a going concern, and I had other writers writing for me constantly every week at the website, uh, and whenever new writers would come in and ask what the parameters were for the site, I would say, "No, we, I want it about this long. This is about this time. This is what you get paid." And I said, "The site. I try to keep the site family friendly. I want the site to be able to be read at work. So please uh, keep your keep your families to a minimum." That said. If an F bomb makes something really funny, I'm never gonna take it out. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, right. if, if it hits with an impact and it's funny, I'm gonna let it run. Look but at Samuel just, Jackson. I mean, geez. Exactly. But don't but just but don't rely on it. Yeah. Thank you. That's perfectly said because yeah. you're right. And that's all I was trying to say. But boy, the people who got offended, I'm like, you're not making yourself look too good right now. Yeah. You're saying you're you, the one woman said it was two women. She goes, No. I'm not fighting. I'm here to point out how rude your comments are to the people that you're talking about. What the dumb and the ignorant? Okay. <laughs> I, by, I'm sorry then. I, by all means, defend them. But um, you were talking about uh, uh, the old style of writing. That is, well, you have to have skill to get some through some of those books. My son, I bought all the Frank Miller stuff, all the Frank Miller Daredevil stuff. So, you know, anything Daredevil I'm going to get. And yeah. the, the first volume, my son is into Daredevil. We're rewatching the first season again. And he's dying. To, now that I finished the third season, finally, he wants to get into that. So he's like, all right, I'm going to read. I'm going to read. Well, the first couple issues of Frank Miller's Daredevil collection aren't is him as the artist, not as the writer. Yeah, those are, those are Roger McKenzie. And, you know, he's not used to people being called Webhead or Hornhead or, yeah. you know, yeah. and, yes. and you and I can laugh and smile yeah. and, you know, but he's like, 
this that's not the way he talks. What is it? You know, the Marvel way of yeah, because when because when, when, once Frank Miller came in, he basically started writing the spirit and putting the Daredevil costume on him. You know, that's a, it was a very different book. It was a it was a noir crime book, mm-hmm. and you know, Matt Murdock talks very differently once once Miller came in. Yeah, and he's like, wait a minute, when did they start pointing out to him being Catholic? Because we're Catholic, and he loves that. So he's like, when does he start that? I said, when he starts writing it. You're yeah. going to notice a very big change when Miller starts I don't, writing I don't, it. I don't, I don't think that was ever, ever introduced before Miller. It right. wasn't. It wasn't. He, he brought that in. And so he's looking at Miller's artwork where it's a Spider-Man Daredevil team up in two issues. It's separate. They're not even, it's not even a continued story. They just went, here he is here. And a couple issues later, here he is here. And so he's reading. He's like, yeah, it's kind of tough to get through. And then he hit that third issue. He goes, oh. Yeah, here you go. He, oh, the yeah. art's even better. And they they have Bullseye in there, who I, who Frank Miller didn't create, but yeah. definitely improved upon. Yeah. And he's like, okay, now, okay, here, this is the Daredevil I know. Yeah, And then the, that's about the same time Frank Miller grabbed Kingpin by the hand. And just yanked him over out of Amazing Spider-Man and made him a Daredevil bad guy. He was asking me that last night. He goes, was Daredevil or was Kingpin originally a Spider-Man villain? He said, yep. I said, remember that that bonus thing? If you watch the – it's on YouTube, but it's uh, the the bonus interviews with Gene Colan. And, yeah. You know, and they talk about – Ramita, I think, says, yeah, he was kind of testing me out to see if I would do Daredevil. And uh, he, he wanted – I brought Kingpin over and – you know, so I said, you've seen yeah. that. He goes, oh, okay. So now he's going to go back and watch it. Yeah. But, it's but no, it, it, it can be tricky. Like, I've, if I'll, I, I'll want to recommend Chris Claremont X-Men books to people. Sure. And, sure. And, I, and those books are great and they hold up, but they're wordy. They're very wordy. And e- e- even with, the, with, 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 with those Mackenzie Daredevils, I mean, co- people who read comics coming in now are not used to the thought balloon. And like when you get these gigantic thought balloons that are basically first person narration, it can be off putting. I love the thought balloon. I wish I'd have it back. It depends on the character. Like Spider Man, yes. Yeah. Batman, no. You can't yeah. do, you can't have Batman go, hmm, I wonder what I'll have for dinner when I get home yeah. tonight. Spider Man can do that. Yeah. But Batman yeah. is a Batman, Batman with a, and with him, that's the genius of Robin, is that Batman needs to be reacted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, if, if you have a sidekick for Batman, it gives him someone to talk to as opposed to talking to himself. Right, right, that, right. That works so much. But I, I just the I just got the um, gigantic uh, omnibus of the last 25 or 30 issues of 1970s Brave and the Bold Batman team up. Oh, uh, I want to – just for I, uh, the uh, – what's his name's heart alone? Jim Apero. It's Jim Apero was, was my Jim first. Apero. He was my first favorite Batman artist. Where I went, I want to style my drawing after him. Yeah, right. Apero, Apero's Batman is my Batman to this day. Yep. And and, and, and the, the great thing about Brave and Bold was every month, every month you got to see Apero draw somebody entirely different. Yeah. So it'd be Batman, Supergirl, or Batman and Ragman, or Batman and Weird uh, Guys, Batman, Dead Man, Batman, or Mandy. You know, and, was, and that's why the animated series has has Commandy and, and all those weird characters in it because they were all in Brave and the Bold comics, yeah. and they, they're just so good. But the 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 the, uh, the writing style is definitely a different style. It it, it it can throw new readers off. It really can't. Like for me, I love Bendis's stuff. Uh, I think the only maybe there was two series that didn't pay off his Spider Woman. Mm-hmm. kind of went flat it didn't really you know go anywhere mm-hmm. it was enjoyable but it was a long playing record as opposed to 45 yeah you know and and moon knight moon knight was good but the twist at the end you went oh yeah it all didn't, right it didn't quite land. bendis for me is like the strangest example of one of my favorite writers that i absolutely hated at the beginning and then he won me over. Yeah. And, and, and the surprising thing is that I stuck around because the beginning when Bendis first came in with that Avengers disassemble thing, where he blew up the mansion and killed off Hawkeye, you know, and I was I was like, oh f this guy. I, I, <laughs> I, I hate you. Fi- 
Audi 5000. So I didn't read New Avengers. I didn't read anything. And it took about eight months. And and my friend, who at the time, um, uh, yeah, this is the, my, my former partner in Blastoff, at the shop he owned before that, he was my convoy. He's like, dude, it's getting good. I'm like, it's been this. I'm not reading that. He's like, dude, it's getting good. And so he, he just gave me the trade of the first six. The, the New Avengers, where Spidey and Wolverine joined the team. And I read it grudgingly, and I came back next the next week. I didn't give him the book, but I gave him twenty bucks. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Add yeah. to my poll, and it was I, good, and it, it was good. But the coming in the way he did just absolutely. Sure. Hated. Well, I remember I was at a, a con in New York City when that issue, that disassembled issue, happened, and everybody was talking about it. And I'm like, all right, I'll get it. It wasn't at the comic book store; it was sold out. So I'm at a con in the Pennsylvania Hotel in New York, and I'm like, I want that. And the guy was charging more than he should yeah. have. You know what I mean? Like being a jerk. So I got it, and I didn't know much about Bendis. Bendis for me was Ultimate Spider-Man when it started. Yeah. So and it was around that time that this happened. So I'm like, all right, I'll get it. Oh wow, the art's fantastic, and boy, I like the way this guy writes. Next thing you know, his new Avengers, that's my Avengers. Mm -hmm. I, for me, that's peak Marvel, current day Marvel for me is that time when they were taking chances. You had new Avengers, they were a street level group. You got the people in the Avengers I wanted to be teamed together. Wolverine, Daredevil eventually, they're smart enough to get, uh, you know, all those guys, Spider-Man. And, uh, and also him bringing back some of his 70s favorites and making them big players. And making them big players. Luke Cage and Spider-Woman. Yeah. I mean, holy crap. And you care about these characters that you never even thought about before. And, and you know, every issue was epic and it felt big. And then they had Civil War. And Civil War, I just talked about this to the comic book guy. I, I stopped in last Wednesday and had this chat. Here's where Marvel lost me overall. This was the heyday. Civil War happens. It shakes everything up to a beautiful degree, and not just for the sake of sales. It was the the way the world we know it now can't is different and isn't the '60s Marvel. You have to have it where, and, and this could be fuel for the next forever if they did it right. The bad guys in the end of Civil War, or the good guys. Yeah, they they all get together to fight bad guys. But guess what? This guy has a philosophical difference with this guy. So even though they're fighting bad guys, well, now you get another issue or story on these two alone fighting. That, there's your gold mind right there. You, not everybody has to be buddies. Not everybody has to be on the same team. When they do run into each other, it means something. You know what I mean? And then they and, had it. And, and and when they were doing that, they had enough long-term planning going on that each one of these things would end and lead logically into the next to the next one. Events. But in, in such a way that also nothing was being done that could not be put back together. Eventually right. they were able to get the classic Avengers back together again and it worked. And but and it was a long road, but it worked out. See, and that and that was exactly where I really began digging Bendis because right after Civil War. Was whenever you know Norman Osborn? Oh, uh, Dark Avengers! Dark Avengers! And Dark oh. Avengers! Right? It was great. It was and so good. The one and the, the the one that got me was whenever Dark Avenger or whenever um Norman Osborn talks the Sentry off the ledge with Five Guys Burgers and fries. And <laughs> yeah. so, what it is? It's just a human moment, yeah. and it also helped that the guy was drawing Norman Osborn as Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. And he was really doing it well. And so all of a sudden, Norman Osborn is oddly charismatic in a way he's never been. And you bought it. And then you that kind of made you buy him as this kind of ultimate player who could kind of manipulate this, this group of psychos. Yeah. Dark Avengers was great. It was so great. It was so great. And like I said, everything that Bendis was doing was great. Marvel was great. And then, I don't know if it was because Bendis left. Or what? Or it was be, uh, Bendis left because of this. Marvel makes the decision of no, wipe out everything. We're going back to the old. I think it was when they did Brand New Day with Spider Man, yeah. and they're like, we have to bring it back to the '60s style. So everything that happened, we're wiping out. Like, wait a minute. So New Avengers, 
there's no ending. They just have a new Avengers team. So we never saw the issue where they disbanded or they said, you know, here's well, what I think I think after the Bendis thing, they that led into the Jonathan Hickman Avengers run. And with and with that one, it basically, was like everybody in the everybody in the Marvel universe is an Avenger if you want to call on them, which going against the whole idea of the Avengers. And that was when he brought in Shang Chi and Hyperion, and that was didn't it didn't make sense. And Hickman's an Hickman's an interesting writer. He's got he's got some great strengths. He worked great on his Fantastic Four run, okay, because because he's very cold and he's very remote, and you don't get a lot of heart. And that works for FF because FF is supposed to be about explorers. And right. Reed is like that. So you kind of read those books through Reed's perspective. But it doesn't work on Avengers, I didn't think. Right. And, that, and that's why that was kind of the end of Avengers. Because that whole time Bendis was running with Avengers, Avengers was the engine that drove that whole company. Yeah. And yeah. then once he left, it did, that didn't happen anymore. And and it was like Marvel went, yeah, we know. we're uh, uh, The guy at the comic book store, Dave, uh, he said, well, you know what? Casada said at one point, I think every year we should do a, a new number one and it should be like seasons. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the problem. Because it, it, the logic was new readers could hop on and not feel like they needed to know the stuff before. But what Marvel has done is go, yes, that's what we're doing. Which means nothing before matters. I think Marvel, Marvel was built on the idea that everything that happened before matters. That was what made that was what made Marvel different than DC in the '60s. That's why that was why people were drawn to it. And if you if you de-emphasize that, you lose readers. Right. And but yeah. they were like, no, no, we have to do the cheap and easy first issue yeah. every year. Like, wow. Well. And like and like during during that whole that whole Bendis Avengers run. You didn't have a strong sense of when things were going to be coming to a close or not. That wasn't that wasn't. And the other problem with seasons is when when you get to eleven, when you know twelve is coming up and we're done, and now we're on to the next thing. And, and it it could it it gives an artificial uh, shape to your pacing, right? Whereas right. with 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 that that whole bend and and for mostly the, the strength of the Marvel Universe in general is that there is one continuous yeah. timeline. Because they did what they did after Civil War was Dark Avengers, to well, you know they did that, but then it went into Secret Invasion. No, no, it was Secret Invasion first because Secret Norman Osborn becomes the hero of the world because he kills the aliens. That's right. That's yes, right. That, that's what got to that point where he was like he was he was uh, the, the the world's hero. But yeah, yeah it, it was Civil War to Secret Invasion, and you think well that's what's going to bring them all back together again, and then they went to Dark 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 Avengers. Right, and then that, uh -huh. that led to siege. Was siege the whole right, thing. yeah, and and uh, you know, and I remember people at the time, of course, you know, everybody has to complain about something as great as it is. They're like, wait a minute, there was no definitive ending to this story, right? That's life. That's it, it should, and, and, and that's what the Marvel Universe is always like that too. And I love that because I'm like, whoa, the end of this secret invasion just set up the next thing. Which still feels epic, and you're still along for the ride, and you don't feel like there was any sort of grand shift. I go back to go back to my my mentor, Mark Grunewald, the guy, the guy Mobius from Loki. Grunewald used to say that Marvel and DC had two different ways they ran a universe. That for Marvel, history is a tree, and a DC history is a building. And at DC, every twenty years, you knock down your building and start it over. And at Marvel. Every 20 years, you trim back the branches that no longer make sense. But the tree <laughs> stays the same. Everything still happens. DC, no, no, that happened. Now it's happening again. Now that happened, nothing again. Over at Marvel, it's like, well, now Reed and, Reed and Ben didn't fight in World War II. And now, now Spider-Man's friend didn't go to Vietnam. You change the historical details, but the story remains the same. Everything happened. See, yeah, like, one, that's a good one, analogy. Yeah. Grown was a smart dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, for me right now, what I, my way of, with Marvel is obviously Daredevil. I'm always going to read Daredevil. But the other things I'll wait on. If it's good and it gets enough buzz, hear about it. Yeah. You know, then I'll get the collection when there's a sale. Yeah. You know, then, because then it's proven itself. Whereas a lot of these, I would read like I hated Brand New Day because the writing became so juvenile. Like it, it, they were intentionally trying to write like the '60s. Yeah. 
Like, I, it doesn't work now. You can't do Why, it. Spidey hasn't had a really good run, I don't think, honestly. Maybe since Straczynski. Mm-hmm. I love Straczynski. I loved his stuff. Yeah. That was so good. There was some, I mean, there was some weird stuff. I mean, there sure, was. Sure, sure. Where he, whole, he got the, the things in his yeah. phone. That was the best. There's that whole bit where Spider-Man ate some guy's head. I wasn't really on board with that. I don't remember that. But with the whole bit with Moreland where he was becoming like a spider creature. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was the whole thing with the bone. Yeah, well, well it got worse than he ate a guy's head. You know? Oh. <laughs> not, not really on board with that. So, yeah, there were some weird turns. In there. And then there was some of the stuff he did that was actually mandated and above, like that whole his whole Norman Osborn, Gwen Stacy story. Since past, yeah, that was a woo. That was a heck of but a that, revelation. That wasn't his fault. I mean, that one, that was one that was mandated from above. So I oh. think it was famous for that one. They, that's what the company wanted. Yeah, I thought it was a nice. T- I mean, it was a different take, and it was like, oh, oh, the, your whole concept changes with it. Yeah, and at, at, with him, I was kind of like, for the most part, I enjoy everything he does. So, all right, let's see where this goes. Don't judge it too soon. I've been I've been doing a rewatch on Babylon Five. I still have never watched it. Gosh, it's so good. Really? Yeah. Even from the beginning, like I should start. Yeah, no, that one you should start from the beginning because it's 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 a novel. It's it's a it's a five year long novel, and stuff happens in that first season that pays off in the fifth. Well, that's Stargate. That Stargate would would leave little seeds that you didn't even care about, and then later on you go, oh wow, you know things like that. I yeah, because I'm at the point. I don't know about you. I'm at the point where the shows I'm watching, it's really hard to find, especially on topics that I love, like superhero stuff. I'm trying to find a good show that isn't full of vulgarity and cursing to show that they're big boys. Like, you know, we said Titans. Mm -hmm. Every show has to be edgy and, you know, like, let's just focus on a good human adventure story. So every time I turn on something that's supposed to be what everybody's talking about, I'm like, oh, it's good. If you want something that that is, um, it's a dark comedy and a, a, a parody of that kind of stuff, but also has all the crazy kind of continuity and story layering and character, Venture Brothers. Love Venture Brothers. The love. Venture haven't Brothers. seen them in years, but love Venture Brothers. They're they're on like seven seasons. On like I think seven seasons are all up streaming now. Okay. And that's the same thing where stuff from season one gets paid off in season seven. My and wife and I were watching that when it first so came out. Good. Yeah. Then, you know, yeah. because we love Patrick Warburton. He's so great. Yeah. I got to need you to go ahead. And, uh, you know, and he's great as Brock Sampson. Yeah. I have yeah. to get back into that. I yeah. will. I mean, my, my season four, they're doing this whole thing where like all of a sudden it's G.I. Joe versus Cobra. I remember that. I think that's where yeah. I left off. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they're attacking the venture compound. Yeah. Right, and they have the the drill sergeant with the E on his face. I think it was. No, the age, Adrian, Sergeant Adrian. Oh, there you go, an H. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. So the, the last couple of seasons of that were great. So you so yeah, go back and finish that off. It's really I, good. I'll probably start from the beginning just because it's so. Dark. Yeah, do the do, do the deep dive. Yeah. Ooh. We watched. Uh, um, my my family hasn't seen all of them, but uh, Invincible. I watched the first one. It's so good. It's it, so good. I'm telling I, you. No, because I read the comic for years and years and, and, and really enjoyed it. I watched the first one and that, that the ending of that first one was just so over the top with where, where they maybe he kills basically the league. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is good. I see where it's well done. I, I think I didn't like the animation style that much. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I wasn't crazy about the voice casting. Oh, really? Okay. You know, give it a second chance. Yeah. I, 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 you know, there's only what, seven or eight episodes. Yeah. But yeah. they feel like a movie. Like it's one of those where you're like, this feel because then you think, okay, it's over. And they start showing the credits and then they give you a bonus scene. It's at it's really, really good. They they change it up from the series where they bump stuff ahead a little bit. You know, they kind of mix it up so you knew right from the first uh episode what he does. Yeah. Where in the comic that came later. Yeah. Way back. Um yeah, I, I, I recommend that. Um what else? Oh, did you watch Jupiter's Legacy? No. Okay. It only got one season, and I know why. It's not good. I mean, it's the premise is there, and I want to love it, 
and I've watched a few episodes, but it's too slow. I want. I felt that way about the comics. It's just so, well, there but, you go. It's just like I don't and care. Then for some reason, I mean, yeah, I, I'm a guy who loves doing real superhero costumes. Man, that costume looked like everybody went to the wig shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of big wigs and big beards, and everybody had a everybody had a Joel Schumacher muscle suit. And I was yeah. just like, yeah. And nice. they're doing the the flashback story of the 1920s, which is supposed to be where he got to get the powers with all of his yeah. friends. They still haven't gotten there. And I'm like, I don't care. It's showing him walk around. I don't know who he's talking to. I don't know why I should care. Uh, okay, his father's Miller, dead. Uh, yeah. Miller's stuff can be hit, hit and miss for me. Yeah, There's one of his books that he, that he, did, he did around the same time. I think it's called Starlight. Yeah, sure. I haven't read it. That that one is amazing. I'm okay. amazed no one's made that into a movie or TV show yet. Because that one is, is, is absolutely just dying to be made in a film. Where... Uh, it's, uh, you see this like seventy-year-old grandpa, and his family doesn't respect him, and he doesn't really care about anything or anybody, and he's just he's just miserable. And he's sitting in his backyard, and all of a sudden, the flash from above hits. It's like, we need you, and you find out this guy's basically Flash Gordon. Oh, I vaguely remember. I'm looking it up right now as we're talking. Starlight, huh? I think it was Starlight. I'll tell you in two seconds. It was a one-word title. And I think it ended in the light. Seven books, volume one. Uh, let's see. Was that it? I'm gonna tell you as soon as they tell me who's writing it. Martin Miller. I'm getting a spinning thing. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, here. Yeah, Mark Miller. Yeah, I remember when that came out. I thought, ooh, I wonder if that'll and be so, worth so it. So it's 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 basically it's it's you know old retired bitter cranky Flash Gordon get called back to Mongo to do it all again. And it was okay. really well done. It's six issues. Yeah, it was really good. I'll have to give that a shot. Um, did you watch? I'm just going through all the shows that I have been enjoying. Uh, there only murders in the building. Uh, it's on my list. I got to check it out. It's nice. It, yeah. Again, little cursy. Yeah. But it has such a nice um, what you would expect from Steve Martin. Yeah. A nice rhythm. It's it's about. I'll give you the the basic premise. <clears throat> they live in the building uh, in New York City. He's an old TV cop, and Martin Short is a guy who used to do plays on Broadway. And the girl is a girl who, for some reason, lives in the building. And they don't know each other. They ride the elevator sometimes together. They don't care. Well, a murder, uh, something happens where somebody pulls the fire alarm. So they all have to get out of the building. Well, they can't go back into the building, so that they end up in the same restaurant, but they're all listening to the same murder podcast, like True Murder. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, are you listening to that? Yeah, why? Do you think it's this? So they get talking. Somebody in their building got murdered. So the three of them decide, let's do a podcast and figure it oh, out right as here. we go. Yeah, and it's so cool because besides that neat little nugget, you see the relationships develop. You know, I said anything. Anything with those two is going to be great, anything right? With, with, with Short and Martin, I'm in for. That's yeah. That, yeah. So I, it's definitely on my list. I needed to watch. What are, What are you reading recently? Uh, it's funny. Ever since I uh, I got out of uh, having the shop, it, it took about six to seven months, and now all I'm interested in is back issues. I'm just really? back issues, old stuff. So right now I'm going through the. Um, the uh, the the uh, Brave and the Bold I just mentioned about. I got a full run of of, of the Kirby Captain America's Next. Mm. I just got this this week. New Marvel Masterworks Adventures. Okay. This is okay. now it's the it's Master Masterworks. This is like the, the 21st volume. It's been around so long now that it's getting to the comics I read as a kid. Okay. This is Avengers. I want to say about 82, 83, not 1982, 1983. Mm. Right about the time that She-Hulk and Hawkeye joined the team. Oh, okay. Uh, mostly Jim Shooter, a little bit of David McLenny, moving into Roger Stern as the writer. It's my favorite run of Avengers. I have a Roger Stern, I think it is. Uh, I can't think of who was the mid to late 80s, the Avengers artist. Um, uh, Stern and Basima did it for a long run. I don't think it was Basima because... And Fred did a lot. Yeah, there, there was one artist that I remember before I was officially a comic book guy. 
uh, that I would I got, and I thought, boy, this art is really crisp. It was when um, what's her face, uh, uh, Captain Marvel with the white uniform. Yeah, that that was that was Basiba and Palmer. Okay, Paul. Yeah, so that's who it must have been. Yeah, I, I remember just thinking, and the vision was white at the time. Yeah, I just remember thinking, boy, this art is really, really good. Yeah, really good. They, right, they, v- very tight. The panels, the guys yeah. are small enough. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, other, yeah. thing, other thing I'm reading is this Franklin and Washington. It's a okay. fantastic um, uh, history. Just tracking the the um, because you always think about Franklin being like, like a Thomas Jefferson guy with the framers, whereas in Washington being more of a general, it tracks their two um, histories all through the revolution and how they actually were closer than anyone realizes and parallels the two. So a great uh, a great bit of um, history from Larson. Really good. That's neat. Um, man, I know there's lots of things we could talk about. I'll bug you down the road. We'll chat again. I just, I, it's so funny because you were always on my mind. I'm like, boy, I gotta get, we got to get talking again. I know you're up for it. And I, of course, didn't want to be a pest. I'm like, no, oh, any time. I know. I'm like, I, I, I miss Scott. I, we have good <laughs> conversations, and he gets it. Like, like, you know, when when we talk, you, you, you put things in a certain perspective that I appreciate, and also you understand what I'm talking about too, <laughs> because just like the whole pop culture thing, and to watch, like I said, there's that new generation of people who think they know. Yeah. 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 Oh, I know my superheroes. Do you? You're precious. You know. And you know what's great too is the guys at Hasbro who run that Marvel Legends line of toys. Yeah. They're like us because they are. You know, they're 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 putting in a lot of stuff from the movies, which they have to, and they're putting in a lot of modern stuff from the comics. But every now and then, and more often than that, usually like once or twice in a, an assortment, they'll stick in like Frogman. Let's see. Right. Right. I'm with you. Frogman, Frogman appeared like five times in the 80s. Right. Frogman should not be appearing in Target stores. As right? a joke. Yeah. As a joke character. Yeah. And my son appreciates that because I showed him the original um, – oh, who was it? Was it Toy Biz that did the original Marvel? Oh, the ones uh, in, the- in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where it's – Wolverine yeah. with his arms like this, and he put thing, and the claws come out as a block. It wasn't even separated; it was a block. All came with a big rock. <laughs> yeah, and I watched the uh, uh, what is it on Netflix? Like the movies that we love, but they do one yeah. with toys. Toys that made us, yeah, yeah, the toys that made us. They do the Marvel ones, yeah, uh, or it, maybe it wasn't that. It might have been Marvel Six One Six. Yeah, it was Marvel 616 okay. because they get they go through the whole history of all the toys. Really? I haven't seen that now. Do it. I'm going to that next. Because I, I was there for all that. I was, I, was, I was buying all those toys when I first moved here. That so. Marvel 616, they never advertised, but I have watched that. And I've been inspired as a writer. I've been inspired for my, my daughter and my son. Like they do one where it's women writers. And you think, you're going to get preachy, aren't you? You're going to stand on your soapbox, but no. They get into celebrating them and also pointing out the impact that they had. Like the the writer who drew or wrote Daredevil in the late 80s yeah. after Frank Miller. And a sense. Great stuff. I loved I remember getting those where he has to fight Mephisto and Ultron. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Ultron issue. Oh, that's a great that was, issue. That was, that was an act of vengeance. I loved that. Right, that whole thing because I'm like, I don't know what this Axe of Vengeance is, it's a X Men crossover thing, but wow, Daredevil got really, really, yeah. really well, hurt. Axe of Vengeance was great because you had Kingpin, Loki, uh, the Mandarin, and Red like, Skull, yeah, it's Red Skull, and they're, they're in a room where it's like, Look, we keep getting our butts kicked, and it's not working for us, it's time to swap partners. That so they great. all just this is like, Yeah, it's a great, and then you jump off into every book from everywhere with it. So it was so much fun. And I remember, you know, I got the issue right after Daredevil got beat up by a whole bunch of bad guys, and he's laying in a field, broken, bloody, his outfit's ripped. It's um, um, Ramita Jr. as the artist. who I, yeah. I, That was my first exposure to him. I'm like, I love this art. Yeah. This guy, his art on Spider-Man and Daredevil is fantastic. Yeah. I don't always love – I think he gets lazy with a lot of other art, like when he did Superman horrible but during that i was like this feels epic and it's him laying in a field for a whole issue going stitch and mend stitch and mend those bones back together 
Like he's doing the ninja, yeah. you know, mental thing. Meanwhile, Mephisto is fighting him and he's like being held by him. Meph- it's great stuff. That was really strong. That and then you go back and you see the bullet. I love the bullet who just yeah. rams at you and he has to flip over him. Right? I mean, his yeah. art, his Ramita Jr.'s art during those issues got that fluidity that I was looking for with Daredevil. Yeah, well, because Ramita started on Amazing Spider Man and his style was very different. And you could kind of tell he was really trying, trying to trying to ape his dad. Yeah. And then they moved him over to, to X-Men for a while. And on X-Men, all of a sudden, things got a lot sleeker because I think he was trying to compete with Jim Lee and those guys. And all of a sudden, he found his style. And from then, he went back to Spider-Man and then to Daredevil. And then it was like, this is where the good stuff is. This is great stuff. Yeah. And, and so I remember, you know, those issues. And my son is, we watched that, that making of the toys. And I remember the 90s. <sighs> And I remember being, we talked about this last time, like they didn't have great toys. No. When we were growing up, yeah. superpowers was the best. And then if you were lucky, you got some secret wars to get those guys. But overall, it's like, why did you guys never license the toys to be better? Well, the special, the 616 does the women thing. They inspire you. They talk about Captain Marvel, uh, how, or Miss Marvel, the new one. Yeah, and how she came about, and you really admire these writers. Yeah, and they focus each episode focuses on something different. Well, then they do the toy one, and the toy one I knew I'd love because again we were there, and they talk about yeah we had the uh, hot biz or toy biz or whatever it was, and they're trying to talk them up because they can't say this is all we had, folks. I'm sorry. This is, uh, they, they, they were not good, but they were good for the time. They were good for the time, but even the plastic was garbage. Because remember yeah. the plastic was, they had two sides of an arm that they glued together, and the seam went right down. And I remember Wolverine, there he yeah. is, his arms and, go out. And, and they were still under uncertain whether they wanted to try and do the superpowers thing or not. So some would have terrible action features. Like Colossus was permanently like this because he had a barbell. Yeah, and you, and you put that button on his back, so all he could do was this. <laughs> and you're like, "What am I supposed to do with that? Come on!" Like, <laughs> Mag- Magneto's whole thing was he had magnets in the toy, so you could like stick metal stuff to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like come on. We saw that with Superman with the Kryptonite. Yeah, remember the, Kryptonite, well, that was a, the Kryptonite ring was genius, though. At least that was actually an action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, so you know, he's now at that age where he sees your rack of guys and goes, oh, look at what he has. I'm like, I know. Because, he'll again, he goes back and watches these, and he was dying for you to come back on. <laughs> so, because he knows we have good conversation. Well, he's also at the age where he will get, he wants a guy who he's not even that familiar with because of how good that toy looks. Yeah. Frogman? I don't know. Let me read up on him. Okay, and no. they're great toys because they figured out the articulation and how to make the plastic not Hasbro. Great. Hasbro suckered me on you know they do their Haslab thing and their Kickstarter for, for for super big toys that they can't get to market because like Target and Walmart won't buy them. They they have their own Kickstarter, and so if if fourteen thousand fans buy it in advance, they'll make it. Okay, is that what's going on with the Galactus? The Galactus and. Last year they did the Sentinel, and he's coming out like this month. So people are now getting their Sentinels in the mail, and he's the Sentinel is like three feet tall. I they know. got like four different heads on it. You can swap out. Eyes light up, chest lights up. He's got the the um the the cables that come out of his hands to catch figures. It looks amazing. See, and and you're gonna get that, aren't you? Oh yeah, I, I bought it. I bought it a year ago. They had my money for a year. It should be coming in the mail any day now. I'm, I'm going to be looking for those pictures because, again, the kids... Yeah, I, this, this, this toy is so big, I need to charge it rent. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and I said to when they saw Galactus, I was trying to explain how big this guy is. And I said they made a Sentinel years ago, or I thought it was years ago, um, and they're showing him holding Reed Richards. And I said, go get your guy. So he brings out one of his guys that are the good ones, the legends, and I said, now picture that being held by this thing. It's got to come up to here. And he's like, whoa. Said, yeah. Like you said, what are you going to do with it? You have to make a space for it. Yeah. 
That's incredible. I, 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 I always call that future Scott's problem. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I, I live vicariously through your toy collections and your trips to, you know, the theme parks. Cause I'm like, I don't, I'm did never going to get all those guys. Did, did you see the fantastic car I had made? Yeah. Yeah. Which Crazy. is it. Who made that? Guy, this, this guy was put in touch with me by, by a mutual friend, and he's he's been working with his 3D printer, just trying to make different kinds of toys. And he was doing a project already where he was taking classic 80s G.I. Joe toys, vehicles, mm -hmm. and scanning them up to fit the new six-inch G.I. Joe's figures. So, like, you would have a vamp, like the old one from the 80s, but for these new six-inch figures. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my friend told me, I think this guy can make a fantastic car. I'm like, really? So we need to have a conversation. <laughs> See, so, that's so dangerous for me. He, he's finishing up a Hawkeye Sky Cycle for me right now. The one oh, Hawkeye Road. Oh, the, I love it, those. Yes. Yeah. They did that with, with He-Man, remember? Yeah. No, because I remember getting the battling ram. Yeah. And on the cartoon, they would show them flying around with the, the first part of it. Yeah. And it took years because I didn't yeah. want to break my toy. Because when it came out of the box, it's the battling ram. Yeah. They never told you anywhere on that box, this first part can come separate. Iceland. So when they finally, you know, I, one day, I don't know what the heck possessed me. I'm like, I don't know. I think I can. <gasps> I broke. No, I didn't break it. <laughs> I get to finally have them fly around with, you yeah. know, He-Man. and oh. so the, the, the one the Hawkeye has in his miniseries where it's, and then when he went to West Coast Avengers. He with had the glass, a, right? The glass, and, yeah. The, that's the last point. He, he, he's getting the, the, the transparent resin so it can have the windshield on it. So, but the, he's already done with the, with the, the body. It looks amazing. Ah, oh, see. Amazing. Do you, and now, you, do you have all of them displayed like those guys? Um, I, I rotate stuff in and out in my library. Yep. So with, yeah. <laughs> I do the same thing. I'll be in my room, like, because I'll put the Funkos, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And at one point, you just kind of look around, you go, I'm too used to this. I need to give other people or other other people other <laughs> things their space. Hasbro has been so crazy with with their character server over the last ten years. It's like, I mean, I, I couldn't display them all at once. So I'm like, all right, it's time for an Avengers setup, or or it's time for a Defender setup, or time to go cosmic. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm with you. I I do the same thing. How much were the those figures there? Like your tall Doctor Who's and yeah, most of the most of the uh, six scale. Either Hot Toys or the 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 Doctor Who's are from Big Picture. Um, they go about one eighty to two hundred. So pricey. Yeah, yeah. See. yeah, that's why I yeah. never got them because I yeah. love them and they look incredible. But I I just you know yeah, again I I don't buy as many as I used to because I no longer have the shop. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when I had the shop, I could buy them wholesale for myself. They made it wasn't them, but some company did a, a Jack O'Neill in his BDU's that scale. Yeah. And I still want it, but I'd have to find it like on eBay. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I'm like, um, I I don't know where I'd put it, but I got one off eBay's uh a custom made one um of him in like tan camouflage. Where it's a Barbie doll, essentially. Yeah. yeah. But they sculpted the head to look like him. And I'm like, okay, I got that for maybe thirty bucks. <laughs> Good enough, Good enough <laughs> for now. That scratches that itch. Yeah. Exactly. But if yeah. they come out with another one or a MacGyver. Yeah. You know, well, there's, there's, this new company just just got the rights to Star Trek. Ah, uh, see? And, and they're and making like amazing stuff. They, Indiana they, they, Jones. They, they know they did an Indiana yeah, Jones. They, they started with a, uh, with Data from First Contact, and it looks perfect. It even swaps in the head where he's got the half-human face. Yeah. They did a great job on it. So, yeah. I'll, I'll it's a, spoiled for choice. Ah, oh, <laughs> I know. Well, again, vicariously through you, because I'm looking at these, I'm like, there's no way I'm getting that. <laughs> I can't get that. But when I see like uh, Iron Giant that are yay big, yeah. how, th those weren't bad, right? Like 15 bucks a piece, I think, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So if my boy, again, my boy, if he wants yeah. them, I'll get him one because he, yeah. he sees the bigger one somewhere. Yeah. He's like, I want that so bad. But he's also smart and goes, it's way too expensive. Actually, that one wasn't too bad. The most recent one, it was a Walmart exclusive. And there, there was an Iron Giant, and then there was also. Uh, Robbie the robot from Forbidden Planet, and they're both the same height and they're electronic stuff. I want to say they're like 35 40 bucks. Get out of here! Yeah, they were, they were crazy, they were crazy cheap. If you find the link, 
before I just I'll, I'll, I'll find it because it, it, they were at Walmart's last year. I made a I made like a special trip to Walmart. They're hard. They're doing Walmart's in L.A. So I had to go all the way down to like Ventura to find it. Wow. But yeah, it, there, it was it was reasonably expensive. I'll for that price, I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, it, it was, when, was I found, when I found a Funko of Iron Giant, that was a, a prize in and of itself. My favorite Iron Giant piece. Uh, it was when the movie actually came out, and there wasn't much merchandise because the movie got horribly promoted. But it's a coin bank, and uh, Iron Giant is like sitting like on his haunches like this. Oh, and he's sure. got Hogarth on his shoulder, and then you put a coin in a spot, and he reaches down, picks it up, and puts it in his mouth. You have that? Yeah, I bought it new because at the time it was, it was, it was like, this, I'm never going to see this again. That was a smart move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. It, yeah. Mm. See now, Iron, Iron Giant also now on HD on HBO Max, which is great. Well, we saw it in the theater a couple years ago when they were celebrating the anniversary. Yeah, so we so great to see it again. And they're like, oh, "Look, here's an extra scene that you never saw before." Oh, that was right? a great scene too. A great scene, great scene. And then they're like, "Oh, it's coming out on Blu-ray." Well, it didn't for the longest time after yeah, that. It took a while. I was like waiting. I'm like, okay, well, for this Christmas, guys, we're getting that. And I waited, and I looked, and they never had it. And then this past year or two, I finally found it. Yeah. Yoink. So that was a, a Christmas gift that I yeah. gave everybody. Like, oh, you got the Blu-ray. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I try to avoid Blu-ray if at all possible. But everything, again, for me, I don't have to buy most movies nowadays. I don't buy them for the movie itself because you can watch it through streaming. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I, but the bonus stuff that's bonus, what gets me. I, I love the bonus stuff, and I'm also, I just, uh, there's something in my nature. I'm an archivist, I want to have, I want to, I want a physical library. I want, I want books me to be in books, and I want my mom move, a movie I love. I want to be able to have because I don't want, even now, I've got, I've got way too many streaming services, but there's stuff you still can't find. And if I want to watch a movie, I want to be able to. I'm with you. There it is. That's that's the deciding factor for me, too. Like, I can't go. Well, maybe it'll stream today. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll come out fuzzy. Maybe it'll stop halfway through. If it's really important to me, I'm going to buy it. And yeah. like you said, like with for me, it's the DC. Um, well, we talked about that. It's the Spectacular Spider Man box set I had to get. Avengers animated series, Earth's Mightiest. Yeah. I, had to, I had to get those. Yeah. And then all anything that's DC movie that comes out, like Long Halloween. Yeah. That's that's an instant. I want the digital version that comes with it free, and I'll get the Blu-ray because of the interviews yeah. or the the um, behind the scenes thing. Or let's talk about Rachel Ghoul for a half hour. Yeah. Like, all right, give give me some of that. Yeah, that I'm a sucker for that. So up in my bedroom, uh, in the bookshelves, are all the the movies stacked up, and I'm running out of space of all the animated, you know. Yeah, yeah, similar, a similar problem. I got bookcases around here just full of movies, and it's like, well, nothing to be done about it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not giving these up. No, not a chance on God's green earth. And I can't store them in the attic because it gets hot up there. Yeah, plus so, everything needs to be accessible. Uh, I, I, I can't make a trip to storage or want to watch a movie. I can, exactly. I've got, I've got like toys in storage, but not movies. You're I'm laying there going, uh, there or up there. I yeah. don't. I, I don't even want it to go there, quite frankly. I just want to hit a couple buttons and let it play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm with you. I, I some things are worth the money. Yeah. And like even like even now with Disney Plus, as much as I love Disney Plus, when Black Widow hits Blu-ray, I'm dead. Me too. I need I need my full Marvel set. I'm with you. Yeah, it doesn't I haven't seen Shang Chi yet, but I might own it before I see it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know why? Because Marvel's so good. They got my money before the movie came out. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I like I said, I, I'm still spoiler free, but I hear good things. Thank God, me too, me too. Yeah. And in a skeptical world that we live in, I'm surprised. Yeah, I know, so, no. For a character that is not a biggie, he's a basically a Bruce Lee ripoff. Yeah, I mean, it was it was back in the '70s when Marvel was doing that thing where whatever was hot in theaters, they were putting out there. So, Kung Fu movies were big, and you got Shang Chi, and then. Black exploitation was big, and they brought in Luke Cage. Luke Cage, yeah. but Luke Cage had more staying power. Did you ever watch uh, Evil? I know we're going off on another tangent. Hmm. Okay, Evil is a show with Mike Coulter from Luke Cage. Okay, 
Um, it's on its second season. First season's great. Second season so far is also great, except instead of it being back on CBS, it went to Paramount+. Plus. Mm. You know what that means? A lot of cursing. A lot of cursing and now unnecessary, like, glimpses of nudity. Yeah. Just like with Titans. Did you see that most recent episode? No, I'm, I'm not caught up on Titans. Okay. Is that there, there, there? Yeah, he goes to a peep show. See, and it's the kind of thing where it's like, it's so clearly gratuitous. Gratuitous. And, well, and, I, and I'm not a prude, but when you do that, it's like, well, it's just, it, it, it just screams desperation. I agree, too, because I, I, I don't think of myself as a prude, but I do get bothered by it. But I also understand the world we live in. There's going to be cursing sometimes, depending yeah. on what it is. Superhero stuff, I don't think you need it. Uh, and with this show, evil. So they, they even made a big, there was a big um, news release. Moves to Paramount Plus, so be happy you're getting a second season. However, because it's on Paramount Plus, they are definitely going to have the F word in there. And they are going to have some nudity. So not only is it gratuitous and unnecessary for a great show, which you didn't need to do that to make it better. In the first episode of the second season, I kid you not, they took the effort to bleep out somebody saying, what the heck is that about? To cut out heck and put in the F word. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wow. Like, really? Do you, That's do you, bizarre. Right? And stupid because it's, he's saying, heck. Yeah. That's, that's not what the, comes out. Yeah. That's, like, that's, come on, guys. I guess, oh, I guess that would be like what? Reverse censorship? Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny, too, because I'm like, you actually took the time and effort to re loop something. See, and, here, and here's what's funny. And DC's, DC can be a little guilty of that. I'm like, without a doubt. And yet, look what Marvel does. They, they they move to TV and they've got their own they've got you no know, their stuff that that's on a, on a market where you could do that and they don't, they don't do it because they know their brand and they don't need to do it like it yeah. that's what bothers me again with the DC live action stuff or even the animated movies since Justice League War they throw in unnecessary language you're like I have kids watching this this is specifically supposed to be family friendly yeah it, it doesn't have to be Mister Rogers but. but you don't need to talk about people's private parts yeah. while Cap, maybe because it was Captain Marvel, I think, or Shazam, who lets it go. And out of all the characters, why would it be? Yeah, that, that's that's just bad writing. That's just uh, that's not knowing your characters. Yeah, like that was. And my wife and I look across the room at each other, and she looks at me like it's my fault. Like, yeah. Why did they say that? I'm like, I didn't see this coming. I didn't know they were going to do that. You know. I'm hoping DC will eventually go, yeah, maybe. I think they need to get people, different people in charge of maybe HBO, Max, or Paramount that can go, Jimmy, just just stop. You know, when they get when they get the right people in charge of these of these licenses, it works great. I mean, the Shazam movie, I thought, worked perfectly. Agreed. And it was scary in places, yep. but it wasn't gory, not gratuitously violent. And family friendly enough because that character is a kid. In a, a the lead, it's got to be family friendly. Yeah, it doesn't, I, it doesn't mean it needs to be Pollyannish, but it's it's got to be just it's got to be a kid can watch it because the whole point of that character is wish fulfillment. See, I, but but still, all that stuff with the monsters was really scary. Oh, them, them throwing the guy out the window. Yeah, like woo. He's like, yeah. oh, you're talking to me by yoing. Yeah, and you hear him fall like. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's that beat of, oh crap, we're not getting out of this, are we? We're yeah, no, the, the, the lines right there, and then and they don't you do how to walk. And then I thought Aquaman was like that too. Aquaman was was big and bombastic, but but still kind of in that family friendly camp where you could show it to anybody. Agreed, agreed. And that's the thing because you want I, I judge it through how is this going to affect my kids? Is it going to affect them? Good. Is it going to be a negative thing that they're going to have an issue with? You know what I mean? Like, that's right. when you could tell, like, oh, you guys use certain words that now I have to say, ignore that. Yeah, no, totally. And, like, um, I'm, I'm, I want to say concerned. I think Black Adam is a character that you could go over the top with, with that. Mm -hmm. But I also think Johnson's smart enough not to do that. I agree. 
because I think he, you know, this this is the thing he's wanted to make happen for so long. He wants him to be like a like a serious badass character, but he's not going to go over the top of the violence, and you're not going to have language stuff in there because mm-hmm. pretty smart dude. I agree, and he, he seems to love, like you said, love the character yeah. enough. Did you did you see Jungle Cruise? I did not. It's fun, so is much it? fun. Okay, it's really fun. I was skeptical because it's Disney making a ride into a movie, but I thought. Uh, I bet it's family fun. It, it, it's, a, it's like a mix of Raiders, Lost Ark, uh, um, Pirates, and The Mummy. Okay. I'll yeah. do that then. Oh, that'll, that'll and, be a family he's, movie. He's great. he's great in it. Emily Blunt is great in it. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I would I would suspect so. Well, it's funny. And, you know, you, we mentioned that Loki scene where, the, where, where he talks about, uh, about his relationships in the past. Mm-hmm. There's a scene like that in Jungle Cruise where one of the characters – was obviously the 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 lead act the lead female's brother is is clearly gay mm-hmm. but they don't talk about it there's no relationship shown but they have a moment where they talk about his backstory and why he why he's so loyal to his sister and they handle it in the same way that we talked about but even more so but it's a human moment and it doesn't feel pandering it just, I was like, I was so impressed with that. And especially, this is in a Disney movie where they're a lot more careful about sexuality issues. Uh-huh. And they, uh-huh. they played it perfectly. I was so impressed. I'm, I'm telling you, I love it too, because I look at my kids and I can tell that they're turning out the way I want them to. They're yeah. not afraid of things. They don't think things are, oh, that's icky weird. Right. No, it, it is what it is. You move on. Like yeah. to, to be so not affected by it is what I want. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, oh, every time I see it. Oh, here's a good example. My daughter tells me she's watching She-Ra. Have you watched? You probably haven't I'm not. watched. Okay. No. She does. And she's like, oh no, they're, they're gay. Her and, and this other character have been flirtatious for seasons. And they admit that they love each other. Yeah. But it's still a kid's show. And that makes me go. I haven't seen it myself, so I'm a little weary on how they're handling it. But she's like, no, they did it well. And she's nine. So yeah. She goes, you know, but she's like, yeah, it's it's not really the focus of anything. But at one point, they have to admit their feelings, and then they move on. But that came after seasons of whatever. Because yeah. then, I, then I quickly, being the concerned father, go on YouTube because I want to see how did you guys do this? Did you do it the CW way or did you do it a good way? <laughs> And they do it, and you're like, oh, because they basically did like a super cut of all leading up to it. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I'm comfortable with, yeah. with her seeing that. And yeah. when she even said it to me, she goes, whatever. Like, Good. Well, I mean, it's funny. Uh, everyone talks about the way they, they handled it on the new Harley Quinn animated series, which I love. It's okay. crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they really, I mean, by the end of it, Harley and I are together as a couple. Yeah. But, you know, they did the same thing in the classic Batman animated. It was just so much more discreet. And it but also, so, and also really with all of interpretation because you're like, all right, they they could just be best friends, right? No, it, but but it, it, it was there if it was there if, if you, you wanted it, it. right? <laughs> but if, if if it was something if it was something you you didn't want as part of the character, it wasn't made completely um uh, obvious, right? Right. So yeah. you're not reading Batman at the moment, are you? Not really, no. The art's great, the writing's great because they. T- it, it's weird because they took away his fortune. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Alfred's dead at the moment. Uh, he's living in an apartment, and but he's still Batman. And it's a, it's surprising. I'll be happy when they go back to the status quo, but at the same time, I don't feel like this is painful. Like when they had Dick Grayson lose his memory, that yeah. was a mistake. That's uh, bad. But this has been fun because it's still showing that he, it's not the fortune or the gadgets that make Batman Batman, you know. And yeah. the art, the art's fantastic. There are a lot of jokes like that in in Snyder's Justice League about what's your superpower? Oh, I'm really rich. No, it's not. Right. His his superpower is that he's really messed up in the head from a horrible childhood. The money the money just makes it easier. But yeah. this is he'd be doing it out of a one room apartment with a cardboard box if he needed to, which is a essentially what's going on with this now interesting it's it's surprisingly good like i said the art is phenomenal the, whoever's drawing um mora is the guy's name who's doing i believe 
uh, Batman, and then the other one is Detective, and the art is spectacular on that too. It's cool. such a pleasure to watch. Like I'm doing for the my audio series, um, I decided besides bugging other people, hey, why don't you do you know mm-hmm. draw your Jack O'Neill MacGyver scene? I thought, you know what? I'll just draw my own because I I wrote the darn thing. I think as a little kind of uh, extra thing. And also any new episode that comes out as the cover, you know, when you put it on um, like iTunes or whatever. Yeah, you do the thumbnail. Yeah. I, instead of doing the, the the splicing digital thing that I do, I can just draw my own. And that way it, maybe it'll intrigue people to go, what is this cover scene about? Cool. So I've been doing that. And to see artists like that, can I go, I kind of like their style. I kind of want to Nice. You know, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, but I'm, I'm surprised because whenever they mess with the formula, it can be cool for a while, yeah, but or it uh, can be garbage. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason that the, the Batman formula works as well. You can't monkey with it too much. Right, right. Um, let me let you go because again, I know we're just gonna keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, in a little bit, I'll, I'll bug you again, and we'll yeah, anytime. It's always fun. I know, isn't it? I really, really enjoy our chats. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and I try not to be too much of a pest when I IM you stuff, but I'm like, nah, this is worth bugging him about. <laughs> oh, no, please. That's, that's, a, that, that's what makes a day go by is talking nerd stuff with people all day. <laughs> and so, all right, so just so I know next up, after I finish the mirror image. You're doing mirror, you're mirror images now, then you go, then go to, then you go to uh, Broken Mirror. Broken Mirror. Yeah. Okay, that was my concern. I didn't know which. I don't want to read them out of order. It's mirror broken. I've gotten that name wrong for years, and I wrote it. It's mirror broken. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I'll I'll keep you apprised at how I'm inspired. I also let you know when we watch those other Star Trek movies. Yeah, they definitely do. I couldn't wait to tell you about the the Doctor Who where it was the the third Doctor's last episode. Yeah. And I'm like, they're clearly. First of all, I got to see the car you were talking about. Yeah. Then they're clearly writing this. For him to jump from one vehicle to the other. Yeah. And yeah. then it's a whole bunch of his chop sake kung fu garbage, which <laughs> they had no consultant on set. Genusian karate. Get yeah. it right. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 but, but he's like, ha! And then the yeah. guy runs at him and just flips himself. It and was, that's the end of him. It was the most British white guy kung fu you've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, you're precious. This is during the, the it's karate. It's like asking Peter Niven to do Kung Fu. Yeah, yeah. So I saw those. I'm like, where's my phone? I got to tell Scott. <laughs> I finally saw the car with Perfect. the wings. It looks like a, a manta ray. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I love that car. Oh, God. All right. I will talk to you later. Go, man. Talk soon. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. The Never Gets Old podcast is part of the Forever Adventure Network. Music by Harmony Constant. Some artwork by Joseph Arnold and Jared Brown. Donations can be made to Patreon to Mac Jackson. Join our group pages on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Never Gets Old Pod. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And remember... Stay excited, everyone. The Forever Adventure Network. Welcome to the adventure.